it ain't no one way to be successful. Only way to be successful is mindset. Get your mind focused on what you need to do to be successful. That's it. With that being said, you can't give a fuck how nobody feel about you trying to be you. What's going on? It's your boy Aristotle Investments. We back with another episode of Kicking It With The OGs, episode three. I got my guy Big Bank in the building. Everything I said like that I was hesitant in doing, most of the time it was the best shit for me. You ain't gonna be able to do what he did. You not him. People be like, man, you made it, you 27. Like, man, I done went through all the motions to get here. Yes. It's better when you make money off just being yourself, bro. That shit the best feeling ever, bro. What's going on? It's your boy Aristotle Investments. We back with another episode, episode three of Kicking with the OGs. I got a legend in the building, East Atlanta. Big thing. How you feeling? How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling blessed, man. I appreciate you having me, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so I want to ask this because this is, I created this show to empower young people through the OG. That's why I call it Kicking with the OG. Cause yeah. I got money, but at the same time, I feel like if I can reach out to the OGs and get game in. What's stopping you if you ain't got no money? You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's time to bridge the gap. So- That's dope. I say all that to say like, I'm gonna ask you questions about money just because my generation is very, very heavily on that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you get as you can yeah. see. So I wanted to ask this, what are some ways that you've been able to monetize your podcast? Uh, shit. Uh, you know, endorsements, uh, not what you call it, sponsorships. What what do you call it? Yeah, sponsorships. Yeah, sponsorships, like different little hidden sponsorships, little mom and pop sponsorships. Uh, people pay to come on, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Things of that nature, which we don't take that many, but um, host things, you get paid host. See, what niggas don't understand with this podcast shit, right? This shit the new music. Because you can put out, you put out way more episodes than niggas and put out albums. Right. You damn nigga drop an episode every week. Mm. And you drop this shit four different ways. You got to think you drop the audio. That's one check. Okay. The YouTube check. That's one check. Mm -hmm. VOD, video on demand. That's Hulu, Julu, and Schoolu. That's a check. Then you can go to linear. That's TV. That's four different checks. Mm. That ain't even including shit, backwoods, uh, whatever else. We, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Whoever, indirect. Uh, I don't know if you're getting no money from them folks, but you damn right. sure acting like you're getting right. it. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I wear my shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this is a billboard. Your chest is a billboard on this shit. Right. Nigga don't understand. You can be indirectly having on somebody's shit and getting paid $10,000 at the wedding. Mm. Or five or 500 whatever your status is. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, because you got to think. Companies sell everything. Everything we got, somebody sells shoes, somebody sells watches, somebody sells bracelets, somebody sells socks, somebody sells something. So it's always somebody ready to spend some money with a nigga who's gonna put it in front of people. Right. Okay, okay, I like that. So you pretty much named nearly 10 ways to get money off. And I got that from you. You said, nigga, you gotta have how many streams income you said on Big Fat? Oh, yeah, yeah, you gotta have at least seven, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in podcast, you can have down to five, 10 of them right then. I tell you something that you told me a long time ago that helped me. I think we was at the, uh, it's like a gathering spot. That's what they call it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then you was like, you should read this book, Four Day Laws of Power. Yeah. Life changing book. But you know what's crazy? That book, in my opinion, you gotta already have some sort of money and power to benefit from it. Any book though. No, nah, you're right though. No, nah, I was just, I thought you didn't say something, but you're right about that. But yeah. any book you read is confirmation. Cause all yeah. the shit in them books, you know, it just, when you read it, it be, yeah, I knew that. Like mm -hmm. the four agreement. Yeah, I read that one. That motherfucker, that powerful, Jack. Mm -hmm. You're like a sponge. And cause people be like, where you get this from? Where you get this from? I'm like, bro, here, 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 here. Like you never going to success is like picking up a bunch of stuff yes. and, and morphing yourself yes. into this, like, you know what I'm saying? For anybody, from anybody too. Right. Like, like, pe like people be able to tell me, come on. Like, why are you talking to that person? Bro, you don't know who God's sending the message to, damn it. Mm. You running from a nigga because he looked like that. Right. A lot of these niggas would be angels in, in disguised forms. Right. Can tell you five words that you be like, damn. That's life changing. Right. Like, see, I ain't the type of nigga that'll just talk to this nigga because he dish nigga. Mm. No dick ride. 
Nah, I'm just saying it ain't even. I talk to you, right? But I'm saying I, I I'm a, I'm a uh, receive this the message the same from you. And if I go downstairs, the valet man down there, I'm gonna receive the same. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it in. See what you do? You take in all the information, bro. You take in all that shit, and then the shit that don't apply, let it fly. Right. Even the shit that don't apply matter. Cause if I, I can look at you as some bullshit and have a conversation with you on how not to be you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can look at a nigga who smoked dope or whatever the nigga do that I don't want to do and see where he went wrong at. He was trusting the poles. That's how he got from that dope. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause most of the time, you get what I'm saying? Like yeah. simple shit that you ain't even thinking can help you is all on how you taking it in, bro. Like some niggas feel like I can't learn that from no nigga who ain't never had no money. Hey, I need to learn his mindset because that mindset of not having no money is what I would need to avoid. I learned from a lot of people's mistakes. I wanted to ask this because a lot of guys would like to know this. How do you acquire sponsorships? Do they come to you? Do y'all reach out or a little combination of both? Both. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like a lot of people, a lot of my brands that I deal with, they deal with me personally. Then we be having a couple brands that deal with big facts. Some deal with shit show. Some deal, you know what I'm saying? Like we got so much shit going on that one person might he might come in. Like this this look company might come in and do perspective with bank or linking us and then be like, well you know what? Um, I'm gonna do the shit show too, or I'm gonna do big facts too. I'm gonna do two, or you know what I'm saying? Like that just right. It just you really I re I, re I really just hired this lady to um, this marketing lady to push out things to get get things for all my brand. So, yeah, you just have to reach out to them people. Make it big enough to where they're going to come to you. They're going to come to you anyway. Okay, okay. Especially doing numbers. Like, how you doing numbers? They kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all who you want, who you want to deal with. But, I like, it was this energy drink trying to get me to um, do it. And they had some good money involved. But I just, I ain't going to do nothing that I don't believe. I, the, the energy drink, cool, but I know I don't drink shit with all that sugar in it. And, uh, and too much, like, I, I, I. So you don't want to endorse something that you wouldn't that. even do for yourself. Yeah, no, I ain't doing that. Like, I can't be out here like, drink milk and I'm vegan. That shit don't even make sense, man. Mm. I ain't gotta be a project product that I can organically push on the people. That's why I said, I always be impeccable with your word. That's the same thing. Like, I ain't, I'm trying not to say things out my mouth that that could be misleading. If if I tell you some bullshit, I mean it. Mm. <laughs> if that makes sense what I'm saying, if I put right. some bullshit in the universe, that's how I really feel. I believe everybody is looking through life through their own lenses. Supposed to though. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's how I treat, I don't really want to pass judgment on people because you don't know how they were raised, you don't know where they're from. You know, I don't really go by the Zodiacs. I go by like, where you from and how you was raised and what environment. You were uh you were in. I think the zodiacs do. It just give you the uh shell, the shell of a person, the shell characteristics. You know what I'm saying? Cause I be studying them signs, bro. And a lot of people be thinking nigga be weird out about this, but everybody got the shell sign. But you gotta know, you gotta you gotta be able to, like me when I do, I read up on Gemini's. I read up on the flaws of it, inconsistent. You know what I'm saying? We ain't We we got down. We we jump to different shit. You know mm. what I'm saying? So I know like when I'm finna get ready to do it, that that's what you be doing. So I slow down, breathe, and look at this more carefully. Like now nah, I don't whatever you cause I start some shit today. That's why I got six things going on. Okay. I start shit today and then have another idea tomorrow. That's that's what Kanye do. Okay. Like tomorrow he gonna be doing this. Tomorrow he gonna be doing that. You know what I'm saying? It's just your mind never stop working. Right. So you gotta learn how to read into yourself, to your flaws. And channel the motherfuckers and know what it is. Like I, like I said, I knew I used to be quick to judge, cause I feel like I got a discernment. When I first meet a motherfucker, I'd be like, "But I don't be wrong, but I can't handle you like that until you prove me right." It makes sense what I'm saying. Like I can't meet you and feel a certain energy because you remind me of this person. We do that a lot. Yeah, like like it's crazy because I used to give people the benefit of the doubt, but he last three years. Now you're guilty into proving innocent. <laughs> you got to prove to me you're a real nigga. <laughs> yeah, not real shit. Hey, yeah, nah, for real. real That's shit. how I carry it now. Like I'm literally assuming, hey, this probably ain't going. You got to prove to me that this gonna go right. I'm not gonna say it's gonna go wrong, but you got to prove to me Facts. that this gonna go right. Facts. You get what I'm saying? Because like, 
you know how you let your guard now you start trying to see the best in everybody and then now you getting burnt trying to you know look out for everybody nah it's, it's like back in the day we used to be surprised that a nigga went out bad now a nigga surprised that a nigga kept it real damn <laughs> that shit cold like damn that nigga actually kept that shit real for real though that shit crazy bro <laughs> This shit crazy, bro. But that that's that's what's going on these days, man. But like I said, but I, I don't be quick to write people off. My prayer is remove everything that don't belong. Help me accept the things that do. Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like we be so we be closing our heart and our mind on the world, and we'll push away blessings just cause I'm scarred behind these. You can't do that. You're right, you're right. You got to realize you're going to take some losses along the road. And I feel like a lot of people be trying to avoid losses. Yep. Can't avoid them. You can't like avoid Like, be asking me all the time, how do I avoid this? How do I avoid this? Yeah, you can get my advice to mitigate these losses, but a loss going to come. Yeah. And you got to kind of be neutral-minded because if you stay too happy and too or too down, you got to – I ain't saying don't be at a high with the happiness, but you always got to be – balance to know that hey anything can happen tomorrow and i promise the facts you know what i'm saying have you always wanted to invest in stocks learn the stock market interested in trading to earn another stream of income let's just say the average person in america makes 20 dollars an hour that's only 160 after an eight hour shift with my best-selling option trading beginners course six-step process to being a profitable trader free books and you even get to watch videos of me teaching celebrities like DC Young Fly from scratch. I can cut your time to make $200 plus in a day in just one to two hours. Don't believe me? Check out these gangs of accounts from different people that I help flip their accounts 100%. Yes, that means double the money in their accounts for only $35 you get the best beginner's course. One week access to my world famous trading signals. I have an 85% win rate already this year. 30 plus hours of additional training, a library of free books, a free beginner's Q&A session with you at the end of the week via Zoom link. And I meet up with my community at all the major cities in America annually. You're basically in free because the return on investment I'll give you for only $35, just $5 a day with 10x. Think about it. If the world shuts down again, like the 2020 pandemic, how will you survive if your job decides to let you off? All of these robots are taking our jobs, but they can't take the stock market. This stream of income could be earned while at home, no boss, and no behind kissing. Tap in, link in the description, or I'll pin the link in the comments. Keep watching. So, what would be the best way to merge entertainment and financial literacy, in your opinion? Shit, the entertainer gotta listen to the financial literacy nigga. Them nigga the one smart. Y'all need the one smart in here, like, and then vice versa. Like, just say for instance, one don't really work without the other. Cause no. you can get the money, like, like, like you can go get the money because you know this financial literacy shit, you know. But in order to teach that, you're gonna have to link with entertainers and and put these cameras in your face. You know what I'm saying? Cause you just gonna be, if you wanna help people, you right. don't we don't have to, you, you don't have to bridge together. You got your money, you can go ahead and do whatever you wanna do. But it, it seems like your passion is to, bro, I'm telling y'all this is the way. Yeah. So with that being said, you got to do this, what you're doing. Leak with the entertainers and how you be in the club. Man, hey, man, Aristotle just sent every, every, every section in the motherfucker two bottles. <laughs> like, that nigga crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> we was at the chain point. I was geeked up in them motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time too. yeah, we did. Yeah, but uh, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that, like, niggas look around, who? Yeah, I me. Mean, that shit transitioned into what you doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before you know it. Now you got these seminars and classes, and I feel like entertainment and financial literacy teachers definitely go hand in hand. I think so too. I think, you know, we trying, we we bridging the gap. Oh, you doing it? You say what? You doing it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we you doing, doing it because it's it's niggas like you say a DC young fly who ain't never thought about that. He give you all the pray like, nah, bro, got now help me with this and woo, woo tilt. Who else? Just different niggas, right? Like any little baby, I seen you reach out to him and you had him in the. So you, don't think these niggas ain't taking that shit and running with it and telling other niggas, right? Nah, bro, can get you like I just told Stone. I gotta put you on man, cause that's what he do. All that old shit y'all be talking. About. I don't even know about it, but 
I got my crew going to tell me this is what we do. What your man saying is this. You know what I'm saying? I need a, uh, what do you call it? Interpreter. Right. Cause I, <laughs> am I tripping, bro? Cause this shit sound foreign. Like you trying to sit down and show me. You talking about the trading and Yeah, that shit just looked and sound foreign. Like, cause I never seen it before. But after I see, like, if, if I get a nigga like that, who know it, I can sit and he'll hustle like what you just did. And he can tell me in our language. Okay. You get what I'm saying? You tell me in our language too, but you know it's so good. You moving so fast. You know, it's just like a nigga. Pressing button, like, what button you just pressed, though? What, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, nah, this, the market isn't something that's easy to figure out just by looking at it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I tell people that all the time. Like, it's not like, and dudes be like, okay, I'm trying to get money, I'm trying to do this and that. I said, the only reason I invest is to not let my money sit still. Because I got the idea from when I was barbering. I was making like 4K from the army, like 3K a month for cutting hair. I'm like, this money just sitting. If I had this money, like, working Ooh. for me, moving yeah. as I... So even if it's only moving 1%, that's better than letting... Like, I need to make sure my money's sitting still. Like, I always tell people, if you got money in a in a savings account, go ahead and put that into a high-yield savings account. What's that? So a high-yield savings account, uh, Apple has a 4.5 uh, high-yield savings. So if you put in 10000 in there by the end of the year you get 450 back you know what i'm saying like yeah. guarantee uh amex 4.35 you know what i'm saying so apple has apple and amex have high yield savings accounts so that money that's just sitting in your checkings if you would just put that in a high yield savings account even if it's like 100 racks you that's got 100 four, you got 500 yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Off 100 racks, you got your 4,500. You get know what I'm saying? And that shit was just going to be sitting there not doing nothing. Just sitting there losing, really. Thank you. So, but if you had, so even the dudes who are in the streets, I'm like, put that money into, like, you need to have that money circulating even when you're not looking. Yeah. Like, money should never sit still. And that's what I always tell dude. If you got that mindset, you're going to get rich fast. Because over, you do that for five years, not letting your money sit still, you got to think 4.5. 4.5, You got to think, 4.5. You got to think, like, that's, it's just the fear of a nigga, like, coming from the streets, or just, it's just a fear, because I had that same fear before I started talking to niggas like you and mm -hmm. Rashad and all them. It's like, nigga be scared to change that money. Once I got it, like, bro, I don't want to invest shit, I don't want to shit, I don't want this shit. That shit need to be the exact same. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Nigga be scared of chances. So anything talking about moving in money or putting this shit or something else, bro, that shit be, see, be see, scared of your savings account is like a checkers account. So if you making money on, you know what I'm saying, like annually though. Just moving that money from wherever it's at yeah. feels risky to niggas. I you get that. what I'm saying? I, I get that. what you're saying. What you're saying make all the sense but in see, the world. But see, see, you right. But from my perspective, it's risky to have cash because you could lose it, it could mold, it could this, it yeah. could that. And, and when you more. can hold it, you get know what I'm saying? Like now, it's frivolous to you. You get know what I'm saying? It's easier to spend when you can hold it. I'd rather not even have this money. No, nah, you're right. You get know what I'm saying? What you was going to say? You said you lost 100000 Yeah, Yeah, yeah. When that shit was wet. We had 100, I had 100000 in my car, in an old school car in my driveway, um, mm. uh, uh, like 2008. All hundred, that shit wet, soggy brown. Damn. Cause I had them wrapped it too tight in the what's your name in um in saran wrap, just wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it, mm -hmm. wrapped it. That shit sat for like a year. I went and tried to get that shit, and I needed that money. That shit was stinking, wet. You weren't able to recover none of it. Nothing, probably about six thousand. Mm. See, that's that's why I say that's risky to me. But if you would have had that in a how you put that in now from nothing? What I'm gonna say, I got this money from. That is true. Well, 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 that's then you gotta go strategize on that. Maybe I need to go Who and pretend like that? I cut hair and then have a whole <laughs> bunch of niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta do something. I gotta go and pretend like I detail. And that's what I was asking you earlier. Like, how does a person go from the streets to legit? And the only way I can think about it is, you know, transition into something legit. And then, like, what what is the rule? You can't deposit more than uh, ten thousand. So you could deposit nine hundred ninety nine dollars before you gotta do that little shit. That little sheet. You get what I'm saying? I'm keep it real. I'm a, the, the, the the way I did it was like to just make my money really legit. I never put no 
illegal money in no bank. I never even like mm. I thought I went broke with illegal money before when I started trying to get some legal money. Right. So that shit was over with. They can't say nothing. They can see, they can backtrack and see where all my shit came from. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit came from either a party or a goddamn first hundred thousand went in the bank was from a party or or or, or somebody got signed. My cut was a 75 or 100 or 150 or another party. I remember I did a party with um with Future and uh, what's your name? I, I, I probably put 130 in the bank at one time. Y'all seen that? I paid. I did a uh, what you call it? A D, what you call it? When you have to sign off on it. The w W um W two W nine. I had to w do. Nine. I had to sign off. So y'all know that money legit. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I ain't never get a chance to try to like transfer money, legit, uh, dirty money to clean money. Yeah. I probably right. wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have never even tried that. I wouldn't try it either. Do I wouldn't know where to start. I, I bought a house. You know what I'm saying? I gave a dude 30000 He got them, wrote a check, and did all this old shit for me. You know what I'm saying? Put the money down on my house or whatever. But other than that, nah. Mm. I can talk about the house because that shit gone, but <laughs> nah. Because I, I didn't trust it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like so many niggas coming to me like, bro, let's open up this, let's open up that, let's do it. I just didn't trust it. I feel like you can't do both. Mm. If I'm going to be a street nigga, I'm going to stay in the street. Right. If, I, if I'm going to go clean, I'm going to just be clean. So I want to ask you this. At what age did you have your first 100,000 cash? Um, let me see. I'm on the Mason Avenue day. Probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, like 2001, 2002. That's when we started getting money, money. Like, okay. It's up. Okay. 2001 is up. That's when I had my, my, my second baby boy. So, yeah. Like 2001, however old I was around that time. Cause then when I got married, all that shit. So 2008 didn't really affect you financially. Who? Man, I had, went broke 62 times between 2001, 2008. <laughs> like I'm fucking that money up and on, up and on, up and on. Like I've been fucking that shit up, bro. Like shit, you so, know how that so, shit. So at what point were you like, okay, I'm gonna stop fucking up money? Shit, now. <laughs> I just talk <laughs> shit. Maybe like uh. <laughs> Like shit, when a nigga start really working for it, like 2008, okay. nine, start, start trying to be legit, 2010 and shit. And it, like when the nigga start, she started like, cause it was coming easy. One thing about that street money, when it come easy, you'll let it go easy. Mm. This shit you gotta got now work hard for. Yeah. You don't let that shit go easy. <laughs> that's why you, that's why you yeah. go so hard. Cause you know yeah. what you did. I cut hair, I did this, I did this. I, did, sure. I, I went to the arm, I would, you know your journey. Right. I wasn't doing that, but. Send them. And goddamn shit, distributing pack, that shit was easy. Nigga hit a lick or anything, like that shit was coming easy. So nigga didn't give a fuck. Like anybody asked for anything, y'all, hell y'all. You good. You had to do no push up. This shit had wasn't to... shit, bro. I ain't yeah. even go through basic training. He jumped on the board, yeah. getting money. This shit lit. We lit. You know what I'm saying? But then you can't have that same mindset. We did money you working for. So I started taking it serious and I started really working for it. So you a legend from East Atlanta. So I want to go off and ask an Atlanta question. How do you feel about these out of towners, whether they had a positive or negative impact on Atlanta? How do you feel? Uh, well, in the current state that I'm in now, I, I, I embrace it because I got some friends that's down here like rugs and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? They're my friends. I, I consider them as my friends. And even a lot of different niggas that's here now. You know, but the mindset I was in, just being an Atlanta nigga, when the niggas first started coming out, it was like, y'all niggas get me to get the fuck on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real, like, get these out of town ass niggas. But yeah. now as you start to meet these niggas and see, like, hell, nah, that's really hate, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. If I went, if I didn't live here, I would want to move here. Facts. That's how I see it, too, as an ATL. Yeah, yeah so, so, you know, being ignorant, I see a lot of shit different from when I was ignorant. You get what I'm saying? Mm. All the morals and shit ain't changed, but you know, morally, it's like shit. These nigga, these nigga more clear than some of the niggas from the city. So you mentioned being ignorant. When do you feel like the shift from being ignorant to what you are now happened? When do you feel like that happened? Rob Pat Debbie. Mm, twenty twenty. Yeah, I had time to start thinking then. You know, like I said, I had a health scare, went to the hospital, they telling me all my shit up, my glucose, all type of shit, I don't even know what it is, but they saying, yeah, it's finna check out. Mm. 
They try to put me on like 12, 13 pills every day for the rest of my life. I just stopped all that shit, cold turkey, and just, you know, changed mm-hmm. my diet, started working out and shit. So as I did that, try to um trying to lose weight, I was actually losing other shit too, like toxic, you know what I'm saying? Start eating healthy and start thinking healthy, you know what I'm saying? All that shit play a part. Niggas don't know, like, you can go, you you can start trying to be on the health journey, then you fuck around being on the health journey, you move towards a more spiritual journey, more, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Your thought process, all that shit just go to change. So everything went up, your money, your health, your spirituality, all in the last three years, you just been having like an overall growth. For sure. I got, and I'm gonna keep it real. I tell a nigga this all the time. Like I made a lot of money when I was in the streets and just thinking with the wrong mindset. Like I might, I might, I, I believe I have way more peace than money now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We still get money, but yeah. I got more, I feel like I was never rich to now. And it ain't even got nothing to do with the money. Like I'm rich in peace, happiness, understanding, accepting other perspectives. You know what I'm saying? I used to then accept people's perspective. I used to just be like on some, Oh, you stupid if you think like that. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But now me looking at things, getting in these books and shit, knowing that everybody everybody ain't everybody ain't you, bank. You know what I'm saying? Some people actually feel that way. I used to take it personal that a motherfucker felt the way that I didn't feel, if that makes sense. How how do you think you adopted that mindset in the first place? Just by I don't know, it was just a character flaw I was born with, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Just thinking that, you know, expecting me from others. That's even with, um, like how niggas go to jail and tell and shit. Right. I can't understand it, but I can't expect for them to be me. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Right. I used to look at it, even though I can't deal with you once you do that, but what I'm saying is, now I can kind of see why you would do that. You know how a nigga be like, I can't see how that nigga did that. No, right. I can't see. If I did it, I can't see how I did it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or if a nigga that's been around me the whole time acting like he's not that. Like, no matter what, most niggas that told or fucked or anything else that niggas do outside the code, you right. kind of knew he would do that. Mm. So you saying you could see the signs earlier on. So let me ask you this. Because, you know, of course, I'm not in the streets. My family is, but... What are the signs that somebody would tell, in your opinion? Shit, when they lack accountability. That's the first sign. When a motherfucker never can can say, yeah, bro, that was on me, or that's mm-hmm. my bad, or when a motherfucker lack accountability, they're gonna make an excuse. The motherfucker who make excuses, always making excuses, never wrong, never, you know what I'm saying? Niggas like that gonna get in a situation to feel as if though, shit, I ain't wrong for telling, I ain't shit, I can justify it. They can, any nigga that I always trying to justify something. My niggas will tell you, tell you, bro, if I make a mistake or something, I stand with it. Like, mm-hmm. oh shit, it is what it is. Yeah, I was on some bullshit. Yeah, I was fuck you. Yes, yes, yes. It is what it is with me. Right. You know, you got motherfuckers that feel like they gonna um they they always doubling back. Like, you ain't gonna never hear me come straight that nut. If I do something, I ain't finna say what well, I meant this at the time. Hell no. Nah. If I didn't mean it, I just didn't. That was, I ain't straightening it up. <laughs> uh, I right. can't go back on, bro, because every every mistake make you who you is. Mm. That's some good game right there. I like that. Yeah, like I said earlier, I don't, I don't, um, it's right now me saying that back then I was ignorant to the fact that Man, fuck the out town nigga need to get the fuck on. Right. But now I can I can really appreciate my out of town buddies because I know how I once felt about that type shit. You know how I feel about it though? I feel like, especially cause I look at stuff analytically now, like a numbers thing. So they saying six million people supposed to move to Atlanta in the next five to 10 years, something like that. I think 10 years. So I'm looking at it as, okay, if I put a business here, that six more, that's six million more people I can advertise to. Yeah. And that's how I'm thinking about it. Cause at first I was thinking about it the same way you thought, like, man, they coming here doing this, doing that. But then I never thought, instead of complaining, how can I capitalize off this situation? But niggas gotta understand this too, like, these niggas brought, like, per se, the restaurant business to the city. Facts. But now a lot of niggas, a lot of niggas having restaurants now. Like Facts. big boy restaurant, open up bars and lounges and shit. Niggas is doing that. 
So you gotta, to me, just being closed minded, just like that's closed minded shit. Like thinking like, cause them nigga brought value. Right. At the end of the day, the way them niggas party up there, they make people they they come down here and start partying, bringing the Jay Z's and all these niggas down here, even though they've been coming. But now they feel comfortable cause they people here, and mm -hmm. it's just opening up the city that this is an international party place now. Yeah. The niggas from like Meacher and all them niggas, when them niggas came down here doing what they were doing, they bringing niggas from other cities to see that Atlanta was the Mecca. It's the Mecca. Mm. Yeah, Cause if we would've waited on the nigga from the city to build it, if that makes sense, what I'm saying, cause true. niggas didn't have a hustler spirit, we just knew how to get money out the streets and shit like that. So you, you feel like they turned up our entrepreneur when everybody started moving here trying to build? Yes, they showed they showed what was possible. Like y'all need plan in this city, nigga. This how we do it. We got a restaurant. Now we going to all these nigga clubs. Now you start seeing a lot of nigga with clubs. Mm, that is true. Not just rinky dink club, nigga getting real clubs. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So you were born and raised in Atlanta. Yes, Grady Baby, 80 Grady Street. Okay, okay. I was okay. born at 6:09 a.m. in the morning. 6:13 a.m. in the morning. I weighed six pounds nine ounces. June the 19th, 6:66. Lit. Okay. 6:19, 6:30, in the morning. Right. Some people would be like, six, six, six. What the hell is like? Yeah, I'm just oh, yeah. saying, 6:13, 6:09, 6:19. Shit. That was up, that was up. And then uh <laughs> I would like to ask this, did you grow up with both parents? No. My okay. grandmother raised me. My um my mom, well, my mom birthed me, but we know that. Right. <laughs> but my dad mother raised me. She raised me, my sister, my brothers, you know, all my cousins, all others. My grandma house, Miss Jones, she legendary, she raised in that whole neighborhood. Mm. So your parents didn't raise you? No. And my dad really went to chain game when I was 13. He just got out a few years ago. He did like 26 years. So mm. I was I was forced to, you know, take care of him while he was gone. Do you feel like what effect did that have on you? Like with your father not being present? Like do you see the effects as a grown man? Uh no, nah, I, I, I'm gonna keep it real. I see the um I feel like if I, I feel like I wouldn't be the nigga that I feel like I am if I was raised, like if I was coddled. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like if I was the nigga that just had, the, uh, because of, if I had a um, no mom and uh, a, a, a mom and dad family the way I, you know what I'm saying? I was raised, not to say nothing wrong with this, because my kids had this, but. They try to go on their own shit, but that's all. So we'll get back to that. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, I feel like me personally, the type of nigga that I am, that I grow to be, I would have had an entitlement spirit if I had somebody that was taking care of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like right. that's what put that shit, that, that, like being coddled and always having everything you need. To me, that shit kind of fuck, fuck you so up. So you never felt like somebody owed you something? Never. Like since you was a never, kid, never middle school, never high school, never. It ain't nobody's fault. I always felt like it was my fault for whatever I ain't got. See, like I felt like with so many people behind this, cause people think, how can another nigga, how can another nigga be the blame of your downfall? If they ain't harmed you, I don't understand that. Me either. Yeah, I don't understand, I understand that. that. Those are excuses, bro. That shit done killed more nigga than AIDS, cancer, any disease ever. Excuses done kill all type of niggas, man. <laughs> it's, so it dish nigga fault. Like, bro, I done had niggas, bitches lead them and all that, and a nigga say, I still have my bitch, your bro would've got them made sure my career took off. Mm. How the fuck I'm gonna make sure <laughs> your career take off? No. Well, how the fuck I'm gonna do anything? Like, I just never, bro, I never depended on no nigga. It's, it's hard for me to ask a nigga for goddamn to send me an Uber, anything, bro. It's just hard, I walk. I got plastic fascia out here too. My feet fucked up. But nigga, I feel like I that's an Atlanta thing. I don't know. People ask me the same thing. Like my mom always told me, don't ask nobody for nothing. No, uh, nothing. You know, I don't get it either. Yeah, I can't give you the. Um, I don't know, bro. You know what I'm saying? Now we could collectively get money together. Yeah, yeah, let's like get right. us some money together. Yeah. But I need to bring something equally to the table. I don't. It don't need. It don't need to be. You know, now now just say when I do shit with my rich buddies, right? Like my super rich buddy, hundred million dollar niggas. 
30, 40 million dollars, nigga. Hell, no, nah, I ain't putting out no money. Mm. What is the put lot? But you, I, 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 don't, I don't want shit. I don't want no tip, but we finna do a play together and we finna do a concert. Hell yeah, you put up the money. Get your money back, then we split the profit. Cause I'm bringing the play. That ain't the same thing. But if I'm every month, like, I know some niggas will let a grown, another grown man take care of him and his bitch. To me, you a bitch. How does that happen? You got niggas like that. And I tell they bitch, man, this nigga ain't sent the money this month. Bro, what kind of nigga you is, bro? So you let another man take care of you, your baby, and your girl. Now I can see if y'all, y'all, you worked for him, right? Or y'all work together. That's different. I'm saying like, take care of you, nigga. Getting your allowance. Cause, cause that's his brother, and he up or something. Yes, this my uh, homeboy, my brother. We up, whatever. Like, yeah. a nigga, just taking care of you like a bitch. Oh, I, I can't do that. That's crazy. So I want to ask you this: you, you've been in Atlanta your whole life. So in your own words, can you explain? The difference between the West, South, and East Atlanta, man, in your own words, and it's North. All, to me, it's all the same but different. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But you can tell the difference. Like, um, West Side more gonna be more ratchet because it's more close to the city, and there was more projects. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the slang is different. You know what I'm saying? East side niggas, all right, all right, let me break it down like this. West side niggas is just most of the time, like street niggas, well, I'm talking about street side of it. Right. I can't say like the other part. Street, street niggas, you tell them niggas really came from, they were, they shit was more slumped out. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. more goddamn boarded up houses, all that shit, projecty. Mm -hmm. East side niggas, you know what I'm saying? Zone six like kinda on the borderline, uh, right before it get to the, like, the Kirkwood, Edgewood, Meadows, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All that shit was kind of still, because Edgewood, Kirkwood, we had, like, little project, little small, you know what I'm saying? Edgewood Court was a project, basically. East Lake Meadow was a project, the big one, the biggest project, Little Vietnam. So we on the east side, but we, East Atlanta, we still got Atlanta police cars to come through. Mm -hmm. But anything past that, them niggas was kind of raised with moms, with same mom had, but them niggas, Felt the way that niggas felt like, okay, we soft cause of this. You know what I'm saying? You got niggas from the east side feel like, oh no, nah, we still get money, we still with the shit. So it just basically more. east side got a mix to me, like, cause they got the Decatur and all that good stuff, and they got Kirkwood and all that. But keep going. What's your exactly? Else? That's what I'm saying. But like, but but you can't, cause niggas, like I said, the only difference is poverty. East side with more poverty. I mean, west side with more poverty. Mm -hmm. But East Side niggas was the same type. Atlanta niggas, we get money, we do the same shit, but don't get it fucked up because cause we, we 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 don't come from poverty. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, I feel like that's the dilemma. And, and West Side niggas felt like, oh, you niggas, y'all niggas ain't having rough. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real. Y'all niggas ain't having rough. But East Side niggas feel like, bro, we'll smoke y'all niggas. Don't just be real. Yeah. Like, who don't care nothing about all that? Who rough what? I'm just saying, like, that's just what it is. What about South? Um, South side niggas more laid back, but they 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 to to east side and with like I'm telling you, west side feel like every side country. They feel like <laughs> east side nigga country, south side nigga country, north side nigga country. East side nigga feel like you know what I'm saying? Fuck everybody. I'm just being real. Yeah. North side niggas feel like them nope. niggas think we from out of town. South side, to me, these are these are only my opinions. You know what I'm saying? Right. So niggas can take it personal with us. South side, every side feel like they got something to prove to the city niggas. Like, fuck y'all niggas. <laughs> Cause you know what I'm saying? Just like the shit on the red drop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause when we out of town, when you from no matter what side, east, east, west, south, north, you gonna say you from Atlanta. Right. Right? Yeah. So <laughs> that shit just crazy, bro. Oh, nah, you I, like I talking about shit. Yeah, I want your perspective on it. That's a great question to ask. But yeah, but I feel like east side niggas, cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, we, we, we on the borderline. Like my grandma paid taxes for a full to end account. Right. Cause we on the borderline. But I get it. I get it. like I always had West Side Park. I went to school on the West Side. I went to school at uh, Jesse May Jones um, in Hamilton. I went to all the alternative schools, West Side niggas. I, we used to go downtown. You know what I'm saying? Like 
all my pops from over there. I got money with niggas from, from the west side and the east side, so I know the difference. Yeah, I was I I spent time everywhere. Uh, I was on the south. I would I never lived on the west, but it was south and east for me, mostly. But it, I'm gonna tell you the difference between women. Like we used to go. <laughs> this ain't no no disrespect. <laughs> like when we used to go just fuck on the west side girls. Like I'm just gonna fuck. I'm just gonna slut these hoes out. Right. The nigga catch you a deep decay of life on your bitch. You think nigga, you gonna marry her? <laughs> That's the difference. That's the difference. Like, nah, this bitch here from Decatur, bro. She different. Like, yeah, <laughs> she had the same. Mom, she got morals. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's different when you you catch a bitch at the Golden Glide, then you catch one that screaming wheel. It's totally different. For sure. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. So I used to be a music executive, correct? Yes. Okay. So are you still doing that? I still got my record label, uh, Duct Tape Entertainment, but Lil one, he's still signed up on the Duct Tape Entertainment to Epic Records. So, you know, I just, he really, him and Al, they really handle their own business. I just keep the company going for him, though. Okay. So, um. He just sent a check yesterday. I need to forward it to him. <laughs> it looking like it mine, though. <laughs> but go ahead. Bro. So, I, so, what was it like being a mu music executive? I can't even, I, I really would just, I had, a, like I said, my neighborhood just had so much talent in it. And I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't, I, I've never jumped out there to say like, this my artist or this, cause, cause we was all family. Mm -hmm. you know I'm saying every artist that was signed to the label, we was all family. So I never looked at it as big me, little them. You know what I'm saying? Even though uh, it was my idea to start it. Shouts out to Sosa, my nigga Veli Sosa. Me and him started the record label, Duct Tape together. I brought in partners, uh, R Ricardo from the West Side, West Side nigga. I brought mm -hmm. in my, one of my other partners, S. Dot, um, from from my neighborhood, uh, Zone Six, and, and Allie. Allie had the talent at the time. Allie boy. Yeah, Allie boy had the talent at the time. So it was, it was all four of us, five of us basically: me, Sosa, Ricardo. You know, once it all came together, Ricardo, me, Sosa, Ricardo, Allie, and Six. You know what I'm saying? And and we just took everything out of our neighborhood, like fuck it. You know what I'm saying? This duct tape. Okay. You know so what I'm so when y'all created this label, what was that moment that y'all first blew, in your opinion? Like what was like, okay, this is what got us on the map? Um, man, that's a good question. Shit, I feel like some we had the scene. Some we had the scene, it was up. Cause it was right. a bunch of niggas that was already had emotion. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like we was we were moving around like a year or two before we met Ricardo. But when we got with Ricardo, that brought like okay the the West Side uh, to it. Like Todd Strong, Shawty Giant, all the niggas who had clubs and shit on the West Side. So now we able to go in these clubs and shit and do whatever the fuck we want to do on the East and the West. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They letting us in the back door, a hundred niggas, no tap, no nothing. We just you know what I'm saying? We just was here. We here now. Right. But to get national attention, um, I actually got them blessing these guys. Uh, we had Ali and Trouble at the time. Both of them niggas was doing what they was doing, doing the mm -hmm. music. But both of them niggas get locked up at the same time. And I fucked around, record a song, try it out with Candy. Mm -hmm. That shit went up. So by the time them niggas get out of jail, the labels know us now. Cause they was calling to sign me, but I never was an artist. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you, you, I remember that song came out. It was all over the radio. That's what I'm saying. Um, man. and I was a kid. Fluke. It was a fluke though. Why, why you say that? Cause I never was a rapper. So you didn't want to perform or do nothing like no, that? No, I stopped. You can call Jay. I stopped. I remember the last, the first show I turned down, the first other last show I turned down was 12 5. It was going to be me, Travis Porter, and, um, I think Roscoe dashed somebody, but I was like, nah. Cause I had them went up to like 20,000 a show. So it got down to like 12, five. And then you know my anxiety was too high on them stage. I just told Jay, fuck that, I'm through rapping. I don't wanna rap. Cause them nigga had done got out by the time that she right. L out, he got signed, trouble out, he got signed. I ain't never wanna do this shit anyway. You know what I'm saying? So God just, I just walked away from that shit. So and and I'm pretty good at it too. Oh yeah, you were, that was a good song. Could yeah. you briefly tell me how many artists were on uh, that you dealt with? Uh, or, or just the ones you you know that people would know? 
I know it's trouble, Alley Boy. No, nah, I like to say that no, no, I'm see on some G shit. I like to say that we was very instrument, instrumental in the hoes, the whole East Side, bro, from Future to Scooter to she nigga Gucci to everybody. We all was one neighborhoods on six. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you couldn't you couldn't say East Atlanta zone six without saying duct tape. If you say free band, you gonna say duct tape. If you say duct tape, you gonna say free band. You say 1017, Bridge Court, internet, all that shit was like kind of the same shit. Uh, you know what I'm saying? When it all boiled down to it. Mm -hmm. if, if if Gucci mad at G's, the whole East Side mad and fuck that nigga. That's just what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, shit, that's just what it was. Like, we was like, cause we was all in the same clubs at the same time trying to come up. That's right. what made us start a label. Them nigga had uh, SYS, I never get Gucci and um, Mojo and HB. They had SYS, and we used to go to the club called the Libra. It used to be singles on more than niggas used to perform. We were like, man, fuck that. We need to perform. Did the way, you know what I'm saying? Right. So me and Sosa come up with a song, a couple songs, and that's how we just formed. This in 2005, I'll never forget. I was like, fuck it. Nigga, I'm finna just get out there and start a label. Alan was out, locked up, then he got out. He was always a rapper, real rapper. Like, he used to be with, uh, just, uh, um, Oh, um, what's the nigga name? Mr. Cool. Y'all remember Mr. Cool? No. Nah. Oh, Mr. Cool from the East Side. Alan used to be like, he was a young nigga, like rapping with them niggas and shit way back then. But, you know, we ain't had no structure. So we had our own shit. By the time he got out, he get out, he got our own shit. That shit took off. Mm. Okay, okay. So so I want to ask this. What made you, what made you transition from music executive to podcasting? Uh. Really, I'm a, you know, I'm a Gemini, so I just I just let God guide me, you know what I'm saying? I just pray, and wherever he put me in, and wherever it feel right at, that's where I'm going to go. You know what I'm saying? I had started doing parties. We were still doing the record label. I had put out, a, matter of fact, I came back and put out a mixtape, uh, The Godfather, because that nigga Future, shout out to Future, that nigga used to call me every year. Bro, you an artist, bro, you need to put out some music. Him and Gucci, you need to put out some music. That nigga, send me a song. You know, and this when he hot. He mm. sent me a song, shit. I gotta put out an album now. Nigga send me a song. Every every mixtape I did, he was on it. You know what I'm saying? But right. he'll be done sent me a song like, hop on this. I was like, shit, what you wanna do with it? You gonna use it on your album? He like, yeah, I'm gonna use it on yours. So I put out a mixtape called The Godfather, narrated by bruh, with like four records from him. And then, you know, I still won't even take no show, no nothing, just let it die. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But after that, I started doing big parties and shit. You know what I'm saying? Big old ass parties in the city, you know, just no cap party and niggas like us, just big zone six days and shit like that. But all at the same time, unintentionally, I was building a following. You get what I'm saying? Right. Not even knowing, like, people are following me to this club. They'll come online and listen to what the fuck a nigga got to say. Mm. And I used to go on, um, I used to go on, um, online, just say shit that just get on my nerves. Like, man, y'all, I know y'all nigga ain't not who fighting and killing over hoes and shit. Mm. Nigga, that shit'll go viral. This before I even had Instagram. Right. Jay used to put it on her page, and Dave put it on their page. Uh, Cause I, used, I swore the the internet was gonna be the death of us, even though it is. I like I hated that shit. Mm. Like MySpace, all that shit. Two of them niggas be going back and forth. I hated that shit. So two thousand. Um, what it was, 2017, 18, 19, whatever, Jay created me a page. And shit, that shit just shot up. Like all my followers shot past everybody in the crew. Mm. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just don't beat me being blank, like you here. So I started a shit show. Now, rewind. Future called me again. Shout right. out Future, he called me again and was like, bro, I want to do, I'm finna drop the album Hendrick. This is even drop Hendrick. I want you to interview me. Or let's just have a conversation. It's on Apple Music still. Let's have a conversation leading up to my album. So at 11 o'clock, me and I had a conversation all the way to 12. He like, ask me anything. I be asking me anyway. I be asking him like crazy shit like, you miss Sierra, don't you? Like, you know what mm, I'm saying? No. Russell Williams took your bitch then. Whatever no. shit like that. So the nigga got down, he won't talk about it. We talked about all that leading up to the shit. Fast forward, I started the shit show, which you probably, you been the shit show, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like the Apollo. I was going, me and Hannah was going up to uh, the radio station to promote the shit show. And Screen said, bro, I like the interview, dear future, bro. Why you ever think about doing a podcast? 
I'm like, what the fuck is a podcast? Like, basically, he like, and told me, this all this all this shit document. I, I told that nigga right now, yeah, bro, if you set it up, whatever, we'll split the price, I'll do it. But I'll do it with you, me and you, we can do it. Two, three weeks later, screen called me, and all this same shit just like this. Mm. They had the space, told me get him a certain amount, half back, show me everything. You started the company, shit, big fat. We gone. That's hard. And then y'all brought on Baby J when? Cause she kept on laughing and shit in the background, trying to be heard and shit. So we just like, put give her a mic, bro. God damn, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but Jay just, you know, Jay, Jay always been my road dog. Like, me and Jay done been in some trenches together. Like them shows and shit. That shit ain't safe, man. The rap shit ain't safe first starting out, bro. I mean, we used to be going places where the phone didn't work, like 30 miles to the place. Hmm. Like little towns and shit, these small towns, but that shit right. dangerous, bro. But but yeah, um, so Jay would manage me when I was rapping and shit, like booking right. shows and doing all that shit, then even doing the party. So when I said we're gonna start a podcast, she was down every show, you know what I'm saying? Then people, people, the guests who were coming knew her and shit. Right. So we just pulled up her chair one day and they shit, they love them. So that's what Baby Jay was doing for you back in the day. She was a uh, manager, but yeah. okay, that's what everything. Up. She was doing everything. That's dope. And I'm pretty sure she do a little bit of that now with uh, Big Facts. Jay, her own stuff. So, yeah. She, okay. yeah, Oh, yeah, 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 with the company for sure. But yeah. she don't have time to handle my business because Jay can book. Like, we could be out, but them folks don't want no picture with Mike. They want a picture with Jay. Right. Especially the women. They love Jay. That was so. That was so. So, I want to ask this. What purpose do you believe podcasting serves to the community? Uh, Just hearing different perspectives and, and hearing that. If you, if you, especially if you align with the person that's talking, like you're not tripping. My whole thing is to tell people you, you ain't tripping. See, when I first got on this shit, I used to just speak my mind. You know what I'm saying? My mind be all over right. the place, even though I still do, but I kind of make sure that's my mind. If that makes sense, what I'm saying? You get know what I'm right. saying? I speak some shit one day and then feel different tomorrow. So I make sure that I feel something before I let it hit the airways because a lot of people starting to take, they take my words serious. Which I, I like say, Vincent, like a ball head, I call a ball head or, 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 or stone and tell them niggas something. They'll know, like, this ain't what he mean. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow and see if he feels feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then they call me back tomorrow and be like, oh, but I thought you were bullshit. Okay, I'm gonna push you through. You mm, get what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause I wake up today and be like, bro, I wanna got them, I wanna buy a pen. Just some shit like that. I just wanna buy me a penthouse. Right. Tomorrow I'm be like, hell no, I ain't thinking what I'll come with buying that shit. Fuck a penthouse. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, but I'm gonna make sure now, if that makes sense what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make sure before shit come out my mouth because I, cause the internet don't forget that shit right there, you can rewind. It's a bunch of shit I see it online, I wanna rewind, but mm -hmm. okay. Okay, okay, so if you, if there was a young man who wanted to start a podcast, what advice would you give him? Do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like, I don't know how to tell me, ain't no way to do this shit. You right. doing this shit your way. I, exactly. I came in here just seeing some shit that I just picked up on now. Like, man, then he got the boom and the zoom and the school and the boom. I need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you picking up on that shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? I'm nigga. surprised because you got a, a hit podcast right now. But it's everybody do shit different ways. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't, it ain't just one way to make a hit. You know what I'm saying? That's fair. Like, I come in there and pick up something like, you got three sets in them motherfucker. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. damn, that do make sense if I want to do a one on one over here. Like, and then I got the main one. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Just little shit you pick up on as you go in there and create it in your own way. Not say bite somebody else, but you got to be be able to get inspired. You know what I'm saying? So if a young nigga like people tell me, bro, I want to start a podcast, do it. Start it and then grow into it. You ain't like niggas be trying to be like, bro, I ain't ready. Why? How? How you ain't ready? Do you feel like it's still room for it to grow? Like, it's not oversaturated or anything like that. Yeah, nah, because at the end of the day, it's always somebody want to hear what you got to say. Even if you start out with two listeners, them two listeners, shit, next week you might have four. Right. Next week after that, you might have 10. It's always wrong, but this shit is going every, like music, niggas, I rather listen to podcasts than music these days. So that's what you, you do? Yeah, I listen to podcasts, R&B, motivational shit, and books. Like, I don't really listen to that rap shit unless I'm like on the way to a hike or something. Or, I'm trying to amp myself up. I don't want to hear that shit. Okay, okay. What What are some of your favorite podcasts? My main one, I be trying, you know, we're going to listen to the top Joe Rogan. 
I just okay. be want to see the nigga cadence. I see what he doing. Like I listen to Joe Rogan. Of course, I'm gonna listen to uh, Wallow and Gillett, um, Drink Champs, uh, uh, my nigga Pale. I fuck with Pale right. shit. Uh, in apartments. Uh, who else? Let me think. Then I be listening to a lot of um, a lot of shit y'all probably won't know, like self help podcasts. Oh, and um, Earn Your Leisure. Yeah. I be I follow all these shit. Shots out them niggas. Um, uh, Lex and Drill. Okay. I like this shit. 85 Sound. 85 Sound. Like, I don't, but my go to is those like motivational podcasts. Okay. I listen to my peers just to, you know what I'm saying, see what they feel and, you know what I'm saying, see who doing what and what's the new. Yeah, the flavor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what's the new flavor? Part. Like, yeah. what's like the new Zoom, niggas doing the Zoom shit. And it's crazy because when we first got re 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 Revolt, the first time we first did the deal with Revolt, that's how they used to do our clips. Like the Zoom in clips, how everybody doing now. Yeah. They was been doing that. I told them, for, hey, don't Zoom my shit in like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. But they was ahead of the curve. You know what I'm saying? You got to let people do what they do. Hmm. Yeah, okay, okay. What's the best investment you ever made? In me. Like, okay. Every time I invest in niggas or products, I lose. And I start investing in me. Shit, I ain't lost every cent. So what are some ways you invested in yourself? In when I started company? investing in my health, right? Just hiking. Now I got a partnership with parks and shit. What's the name of it? Georgia what? Natural Georgia Department of Georgia Department of Natural Resources and Big Bang. That shit don't even sound right. Mm. You get know what I'm saying? When you start investing in you, I just invested in me. Stone bring a play with these people want to invest and do a whole year worth of hikes, all type of plus come in, heart associations, all type of shit. Then um I got this other thing I'm doing called linking us, like making these people come talk to us about these votes. You know what I'm saying? We do it at right. City Hall and Things of that nature. It's all type of politicians reaching out. Hey, we would like to do this with bank. Then I uh, podcast, and like I said, even podcasting with with Scream and Jay. By Scream, he the same type of dude as me because he's a man, but he's a different. He thinks different. So Scream, I could come in. I can come into work. He just see it on me. Be like, bro, you can't be thinking about that type of shit, bro. You're different. You know what I'm saying? Reminding me that I'm different. So when I started investing in me, is when I started seeing. Like, it, cause it ain't about the money with me. Right. Like, I seen money doing a lot of different other shit. Easier, easier. I seen a lot of more money, but this this hard money, but it come easy, but I'm getting something else with it though, bro. You get what I'm saying? I'm getting peace, I'm getting tranquility, I'm getting. So do you feel like it's better when you make money peacefully? Yes. It's better when you make money off just being yourself, bro. That shit the best feeling ever, bro. Why, in your opinion? Oh, cause I did it the other way, and I and I, I couldn't sleep. When you I people like please, I, I it, like I ain't just talking about illegal, like just doing things. Like I wouldn't do things that I don't do things I don't want to do for money. You get what I'm saying? Like I ain't, right. you can't make me do certain shit. Ain't no price you can put on certain shit. I mean, if I don't do it, I ain't feeling. I ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So now I'm in a space to where I love doing that. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Nigga, like I told him, I say this shit on all the podcasts. And nigga, your, your blessing sometimes higher than your flaws. Nigga, I used to get more talkative in school. My grandma used to, you talk too goddamn much. Then uh, you talking ass nigga. My wife, why the fuck you talk so much? Okay, cool. But now we sitting in front of the camera getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Same to here. talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a talker. <laughs> nah, for sure, nah, for sure. I'm a talker, bro. <laughs> Knowing what you know now, what would you tell your 18 year old self if you could talk to him? Keep going. That shit gonna be all right. If I can, if I, I'm just gonna tell myself, keep going, bro. Keep going. That shit gonna be all right. Because at the end of the day, if I would, to me, bro, and you know what I'm saying, I think kind of outside the box. To me, if I would have got it right in the beginning, I was gonna eventually get it wrong. Just because I had it wrong in the beginning. I can't do nothing but get it right. Mm. To me, I feel like the journey, you have to go through it to appreciate it, bro. Like if I take a loss right now, right? God forbid, like if I wake up and they say all my money going out my account, I already know how that feel. Mm. I already done lost a half of M before on the road. I already done did that. I already know how that shit feel. I know what that stomach pain feel like. 
You know what I'm saying? That's and true. I know I could get back off that shit too. But a nigga who ain't never been through that, you're a grown ass man, you looking at your kids and all that shit, and ooh, that shit happening to you, you don't never know what you might do. Not to say everybody gonna crumble when they go through it the first time. I'm just saying, I already know the feeling. I already know the feeling of heartbreak. I already know the feeling of betrayal. I already know that. So I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to be a billionaire and find out that feeling. I be saying that too. Like people be like, "Man, you got you made it. You 27." I'm like, man, I done went through all the motions to get here. Yes. You know everything you could think of. But I'm glad you said that. So you pretty much saying like. You appreciate the mistakes, yes. trials and tribulations, because it made you who you are today. I wouldn't trade nothing, bro. You know, no niggas regret. saying that shit cliche. I wouldn't trade, man. I don't mm -hmm. regret, man. I, I, I would have, if I could have handled situation different with other people, I would have. That's the only thing. Like, if I could have responded different in certain situations, I probably would have. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying, like. That's about it. Other than that, like the shit that a nigga been through, shit that a nigga seen, man, hell nah, I wouldn't trade that for nothing. Cause okay. it gives you wisdom, bro. What's the best advice you'll give someone transitioning from the streets to legit? Can't give a fuck. Like you think you didn't give a fuck when you was in the street. You really can't give a fuck trying to transition. With that being said, you can't give a fuck how nobody feel about you trying to be you. That's the whole thing. That's the only thing holding niggas back is, even in relationships, bro, like, your girl, you probably could cheat on your girl. She wouldn't care if nobody didn't know. Mm. She could get over it. Now, the people know she mad. She gonna be mad forever because she feel like, now I gotta treat you a certain way because my sister know that I'm being stupid. Mm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit, we don't do it because, bro, I don't want to seem like, or bro, I don't want people to think. So you ain't gonna be able to transition like, bro, listen, when I first started trying to lose weight and shit, bro, niggas will really think like, <laughs> look at that whole ass nigga trying to work out. <laughs> 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 nigga wanna be healthy. Like, you gotta think, bro, we gotta yeah. reprogram ourselves, bro. Everything yeah. that we we make fun of is because we don't know no better. You gotta think, coming up in school, a nigga uh, uh, make fun at you because you got a mom and dad. Oh, soft ass nigga, you got your mom and your dad. That mean I'm a bitch. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Cause I used to, even even I had to check myself. Like kids who had cars in high school, I couldn't understand. I'm like, your mom bought you a car in high school. You prime yeah, 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 yeah. Your phone's like, you got you got Jordans. Like I got to go to McDonald's to go work for this. You getting a car and allowance? But you, you thinking know what I'm that that takes something from them because you ain't got it? It's really a coping mechanism. I ain't taking nothing. I ain't like that. Huh? Not taking. I said oh. you thinking it takes something from. Them because oh, they ain't they ain't yeah, got yeah. it out the mud. Yeah, yeah. Like no, yeah, no saying you thinking like they ain't they is undeserving because they 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 they, they privileged. You right. And then when we get money and then we grow with privileged kids and we like, dang. Yeah. I see cause somebody gonna judge my son the same yes. way. Like, man, your daddy Aristotle, man. You everything you talking about boy because of who your daddy is. That shit don't work like that. Yeah. Nah, them facts. Like we everything I think everything we thought to be all right, bro, it's just like with the vegan shit, right? Right. Everything I said, like, that I was hesitant in doing, most of the time it was the best shit for me. Mm. Like, I used to be like, bro, I can't, I can't get that salmon up. I got to eat seafood. I got to this, I got to that. Now a nigga think clearer. Nigga's less aggressive. Nigga mind is just sharp. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga might smoke some weed here and now, but other than that, man, niggas is different, bro. Only reason why we don't do certain shit is because of what others might think, bro. So you feel like people care too much for others thing? Yes. You're right. That's the only, that's that's the whole fuck up, bro. Because at the end of the day, if you were doing exactly what you want to do, you would be free. I'm free. I do. I wake up and do what I want to do. My wife, I love her to death, but man, I don't want to hear that shit. She already know. I'm giving you a choice. He's gonna be him. Because if I'm trying to be somebody else, that's what put me in a stress. Now I'm stressing both of us out. Mm. You're gonna get half of me trying to me be a fake me. You ain't getting the real me. See, can you deal with me? If you see who I am and you can deal with me, then yeah. you're meant to be with me. Am I tripping? No, that's for real. Niggas, niggas, yeah. bruh. Cause I'm one of them niggas, bruh. I be high. I be forgetting the character.
I can't, bro. I can't be in character. I'm forget who the fuck I supposed to be on her. Like, hell no, nah, bro. It's gonna be me. Oh, forgot the lies. No, nah, I can't tell. I ain't good at lying and shit, bro. Yeah. I ain't good. And then I got, I love her so much. I got a guilty conscience. You right. know what I'm saying? She got me where I'm at. I be like, shit, outside. You know what I'm saying? I can't <laughs> be like, shit. <laughs> I'm just being real, bro. Like, she know. She don't look at this shit and he ain't lying. Nah, like, at the end of the day, she still love you. To death. So I got this question for you. Do you believe there's a disconnect right now between my generation and your generation? For sure. Cause most of the old niggas from home. I'm just being real. These That's niggas no way nigga. These I niggas gonna see lie. these niggas go out too bad. Like you a whole OG. Mm. Like ain't nobody doing that. Like then you broke. Mm. You don't want no money. You making excuses. You let a whole rain. These young niggas ain't respecting that shit. Mm. And then these young niggas see certain OG turn into to somebody else just because they got money. Like you'll be a young nigga come around, 27 year old. Aristotle come around cause Aristotle got that everybody know that nigga rich and they got that money shout it up. Now I'll call you big bro. Hey big bro, what God, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to, yeah. <laughs> damn, get out my dick, OG. But that's how it's going on. These young, these young nigga doing that, bro. Like soon as you meet a young nigga just cause his his money status over you and now you got that on his dick. Mm. That shit don't go like that, bro. <laughs> That shit don't go out. That's why my, all my young niggas that's in this shit, that have this shit, these niggas undercoverly call me and be like, bang, you got some shit that I ain't gonna never have, bro, because you got it before me. You get what I'm saying? Not even money. They just saying you got some shit that I ain't gonna ever have over you because you got it before me. It's some things that I'm gonna always be able to ask you because you mm. living days before you, you living days before I'm gonna live them. And yeah. we come from the same shit. Right. Like that shit make me feel good though. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. niggas call like, you know, bro, you could call Dr. Field if you wanted to. But you could stop your whole shit to call bank. Stone, you get what I'm saying? You just sat in on the conversation, heard a nigga. Yeah. Like you as vulnerable as possible telling the bank because of the respect level of no matter what. And you know you you know you know you could put my money in your pocket. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Spin right. it. You know you spend my whole bankroll right now today. And it won't hurt you. You get what I'm saying? But it ain't it ain't it, it ain't that. But most of these young niggas looking at these young old niggas ass. And a lot of these young niggas, it's too disconnect. Young niggas wrong. I mean the old niggas wrong. And these young niggas just don't give a fuck. They mm. weren't raised with respect. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like our generation fucked up the respect. We the first niggas telling start disrespecting the old people. Mm. Our generation was the first generation cussing around the old people. Mm. My generation, 45 and shit. Right. Like, shit, cuss playing the music loud in front of people. I remember my dad used to be like, hey, turn it down. They don't cuss in front of my kids. Hey, get out of here when kids talk, when we talk. We let the kids come around and hear shit. Mm -hmm. And we start, man, man, I hope need to close that door, man. She get on my nerves. She call the police, call the old people, bitches and shit. We started that. But these young niggas just started to take it full, cause that, that's all they ever see. Mm -hmm. They never, we, we started disrespect when we ain't take it too far. Now they see they seen seen the disrespect that we did, and they took it too far. So, in your opinion, what are the solutions so we can bridge this gap? Because I'm starting with this show. That's my first solution. That's like it. you get what I'm saying? Like a conversation. I feel like me personally, bro. I'm 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 leave I'm gonna leave my action because if a nigga look back on bank life, if he can do it, anybody can. You know what I'm saying? If he can just have a different mindset, I know I can. Cause ain't no nigga worse than bank. Mm. Ain't no nigga worse than bank. Ain't no nigga worse than Gucci. Ain't no nigga worse than any nigga that you seen have evolved. Mm. Any nigga can do it, is what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is, hope you, hopefully you get inspired by listening to me and seeing me. But far as all that trying to trying to reach out and niggas be like, I ain't doing that, cause I tried that. Some of these nigga mind made up. Oh, you saying like you're not going to purposely go give somebody advice. Like unless they they could call me and get it. Yeah. But I ain't trying to be the nigga to force shit on niggas. Now, if they want to yeah. hear it, like I be going to schools and shit, I can tell which one of these young niggas want to hear it and which one of them don't. Right. So afterward, young nigga walk up like, bang, ooh, am I let your OG? I follow niggas on the gram and shit, chop it up with me. You want to hear it. Keep in faith. Y'all can hit me up. But I ain't trying to goddamn go to the young nigga who don't want to hear it. Your mind made up, nephew, and then I don't, I ain't, I ain't your daddy. It's crazy because I, I... I gave a young dude like everything in my wallet the other day. I ain't gonna say who it was, it was a dude close to me. And he was like, everybody be telling me, you need to hit your boy up. You know what I'm saying, you need to hit your boy up. You know what I'm saying, this is my little brother. 
So my dad had seven kids. Yeah. So he my little brother. He uh, shot him a whole bunch of money. And I was like, why you don't hit me up? He was like, cuz I don't want you to make, I don't want you to feel like. The only reason. Yeah, and then uh, like, yeah, exactly. He don't want me to feel like that. And I told him, you correct with feeling like that. But then on my side, I don't want to be the one to, cause I done did that. I done came to somebody like, hey, you need to do this, do that, inserted myself. And, and now we ain't cool because yeah. you feel like I'm judging you. Yep. So I learned from that, that I never walk up to a person and tell them nothing. Like you gotta come to me or, cause I, cause then I know this the blessing you wanted. Yeah, you yeah, came yeah. up and asked me this question. Yeah, yeah. So I feel the same way. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like I, I feel the same way you do about the generation. I still feel like your generation is getting y'all shit together. Oh no, for sure. Yeah. But, but it took time. That's why I be trying to tell like the young nigga they gonna eventually get it. You know what I'm saying? It, but the internet, this shit different though. I feel like we getting, we all trying to get it together at the same time, and that's the disconnect. Cause y'all like, shit, I'm trying to get my life together. Yep. We like, OG, oh, help me up. But y'all like, hold on, cuz I, I fucked up. Right then I got to get back right. Yep. And then we like, damn, you know shit, what I'm saying? Shit, so it's shit. like, I feel like we running at the same time. But, you know, with other races, they not running with they OG. They mm -hmm. OGs up here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So no matter where they at, they can't catch up to they OGs. And I feel like we got to get to a point where, you know what I'm saying? Like financially, spiritually, mentally, like we gotta get back there. Nah, but the thing about it is we just got with the young niggas, they gotta determine what which 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 road they gonna go. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, we all um pick up shit from our peers. You know what I'm saying? I started seeing my generation how it moved. I started seeing the way nigga like Jesus start moving. Um Gucci, you know what I'm saying? Just niggas in our generation, oh, these niggas on health journey now. That's the way niggas trying to live. Mm -hmm. Niggas ain't trying to drink, lean, and die forever. Niggas trying to live. So niggas got to pick up from who you been picking it up from. You get what I'm saying? You can't stay in the same mindset. Okay, damn, hold up. I've been listening to the nigga music, now I see which way these niggas going. You All see right. what Jaden them doing? You see what any nigga who got some sense doing? These niggas is investing, they doing this and they doing that. Niggas ain't doing the shit. You trying to do the be the old niggas and they I mean you trying to be the old him and he don't even want to be him no more. Like when I see niggas coming out trying to sound like the old Jesus, mm -hmm. he don't even want to sound like the old Jesus no more. Like so you 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 trying to you don't want to evolve. You gotta watch niggas who evolving. If you're looking for the game, watch niggas who evolving. Listen to niggas who evolving and see where they because niggas is telling their mistakes. For sure. And the only 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 way you make a mistake, bro, how you make a mistake first. You gotta think of it. It's all mindset. You can't do. You ain't gonna do nothing fucked up until you think about doing something fucked up. Mm. So I want to ask you this: People never gonna want to stop being rappers, correct? So a young dude is twenty twenty four. I know the game done changed. Period. So in twenty twenty four, how do you think is the best route for a young dude to become a successful artist? Like what what's the what's the first three steps you should take to become a successful artist? Uh first step is that if you want to be successful, just put in your mind that you that's what you're gonna do. First step is mindset. This is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it. Whatever come with this shit, come with this shit. However, go whoever be lost along the way. I can't please nobody. If this my purpose, this is what I'm gonna do. You gotta make your mind up. That's the first step. Second step is you gotta test that shit. Test it meaning put it on your page, go around people that, that tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Try the shit show. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Nah, but go around people that's gonna tell you the truth and see what you got. Then you see what you got, work the internet. Internet the way, bro. Nigga, you see if you've been putting out, you've been putting out your shit. If you got just say you got a hundred followers. We're gonna start at a very low scale. If you got a hundred followers, right? If out of them 100 followers, nobody like your shit consistently, mm. or you get one, your baby mama, your mama, the only one like it consistently, you ain't got that. Now, if you got four people liking it, maybe two people that you don't really talk to and you two people you love, okay, then next month you drop some other shit, you're getting six, and you're going, you, you went up 120 followers, you don't know you're growing, but if that shit just stay up, 
<laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? Don't quit your day, day job. Yeah, much. you gotta have common sense, bro, because everything ain't for everybody. You know what I'm saying? We need some niggas doing what, what your man doing right here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Niggas don't understand. Like, it's the same. He can make the same money all them motherfuckers you can make doing what he doing. He definitely make over six a year doing this. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Niggas can make the same money behind the camera. Everybody just want to be the star. Mm -hmm. So you saying we need, it's too many chiefs, not enough Indians. Yes, but you but you could be a chief like doing the other shit too. Yeah, I think so too because just because you work with somebody don't mean you not the same man. A lot of dudes be thinking that like, okay, I be telling dudes like, I'm the type who could either I could be the guy who helping, as long as I'm getting paid, you know what I'm saying? Like, or I could be the guy who, who leading. Exactly. I could be in either or. Do you feel like you could too? Uh, man, listen, bro. We start filming at 12, 12 p.m. Nigga, I be there at 9 o'clock. I help these folks get the stuff out of the car, set it up. I do everything. I'm driving the shooter. I do everything. When these folks do clip, they have to, I got to look at the clips and be like, nah, I'll take this out of the hood. I do the creative. I do everything. Me and Scream, Jay, we do everything. Mm. We don't just got them. We do everything. Let me hear that sound. Nah, that audio don't sound right. Let me, we need to re-record that. Tell them before they got to come. We're like, we do everything. Because at the end of the day, I don't want nobody to feel like they less than me. Like, we go eat, and we ain't no such thing as we finna eat at this table, we in this private room. Hell no, nah, we all together. We all eating the same shit. Get exactly what you want, whatever. We all together. That's just, that's just how I always been. In the streets, whatever, whatever. Like, if, if we going, we ain't going, I ain't no bank no finna go through this door and these niggas go through that door. Hell no. Nah. Hundred niggas coming through this door. Mm. We all get treated the same, and I'm going to be the last nigga to go in. Jay, make sure they get them in. Let me know when they get half of them in. I'm gonna get up and walk out. Then we're gonna all go in. To get, I'm gonna come on in. But make sure all my niggas get in first. If not, we ain't coming in there. It's crazy because, like, let me get your opinion on this. I had to get to a point where, once I had to get to a point, but you mature over time, where the stuff you do behind the scenes, like, for instance, I'm always constantly giving back money, right? Behind the scenes. Yeah. Right? Then the moment I post it, and you're like, why did you post it? And, but if you don't, you never gave us shit. So I told myself, I'm just gonna do me. Because some people gonna say something regardless. 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 Like when I like people don't really understand how much I do. Like the stuff you talking about. Anybody who know me, when I take my crew out to these five star restaurants to check on me. Mm -hmm. Every single time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Pay for all my guys to go on vacation. Shit mm -hmm. like that I do behind the scenes. I don't speak on it, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I had to realize, like, you know, that just, that just for me, that's my blessings, whatever I got going on, that's exactly. just for me. And I always tell guys that, like, you gotta be, you just gotta do you regardless. I'ma tell you something, yeah. man, it's crazy, like, cause I, like, bro, this nigga ball here to tell you that, cause he told me a story right. a couple weeks ago, like, bro, you remember that time I got down? I'ma go ahead and say, you remember that time I got down, you said you had some goddamn, in a spot, he said he wanted to do something with what I was doing. He like, bro, you remember how you gave me a key and told me what was in that motherfucker and told me I can go in there and get whatever I wanted to get? Right. I didn't even remember that. Because you my man, you know what I'm saying? You, right. you coming into my lane? Yeah, nigga. Where you gonna go? What you gonna do? Nigga, you better get, take what you want, do what you gonna do, whatever. I know you don't want, you and two more niggas got the key. Everybody right. before they go in there, you don't care, we know what you're doing. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, what, what I said that to say, when a motherfucker really appreciate it, you don't have to broadcast it, cause they gonna go tell people. Like, exactly. man, that nigga broad goddamn, man, that nigga. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got a broadcast. Like, I hear so much shit that I did, like, for getting niggas out of jail, shit that I don't even remember. I might send my wife, like, my wife done sign every nigga born in Edgewood. Mm. Go get him. I ain't even got to be in town. Motherfucker call her phone, she on the way, and I don't even know. She said when they got such, such, out, just go get him. This is what it is, just from you no know, petty shit, traffic shit, whatever, lawyer fee, whatever. Like they just, it was just like mandatory. So saying that to say, if a nigga really appreciate it, you gonna be done heard that like, man, bro, got now. No matter what, man, that nigga retarded, he glitched up, but that nigga make sure a nigga good. I rather somebody show me in act in actions than a bunch of thank yous. You get what I'm saying? For sure. Like, cause. Them and thank you pay me in loyalty. You get what I'm saying? Like, pay me in loyalty. Yeah, exactly. Pay me in loyalty. Like, yeah. pay me in hard work and loyalty for what we got going on. That's the only payment I want. But the thing about it, when you do certain for certain niggas who got their entitlement spirit, 
they get kind of spoiled like your bitch. And exactly. then they get so mad at you when you may can't do it. You know mm. what I'm saying? You may can't do it. Or when, when, I right, just say this right now, right? If I were running with 100 niggas still, if I had to go do, uh, like we do, like these summits and shit. Right. No, you go get your ass four tickets for the artist, and you maybe your security, and maybe a camera person. Right. It's just how that goes. Mm -hmm. And you be like, shit, bro, now nah, uh, these four, I can't do that. But niggas so used to us being having that takeover mentality, shit, we ain't going, we ain't going. No, this shit done went corporate now. That, that was nigga shit. Mm. These folks got Home Depot and AT&T as sponsors. They finna finna let no hundred niggas nowhere. Right. And it don't just only happen on this little level right here. It happens on the Drake levels and the Pluto levels. Like, bro, this shit, them folks saying, hey, we got some comp tickets, y'all niggas going, but niggas can't come back here. These folks tripping. Nigga wants you to walk away from the bag and be mad at you forever if you don't walk away from the bag. Because they couldn't come in. Yes, and that's what it is. But the real nigga gonna be like, bro, go ahead, bro, give me this ticket. I'm gonna take my wife in the room. Hell nah, go ahead. Nigga gonna look, smell it. Oh, they're one of these. Hey, hell nah, man, I'm good. Make sure I'm good on the crowd, whatever. Or I ain't, I ain't gonna come. That's how I feel, too. Like, for instance, I got some dude like DC Young Fly, my guy, but I'm Shout gonna buy DC. me a ticket yeah. and go in the stands and watch his show. Yeah. A lot of people don't see that, though. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, you don't gotta benefit from free. Every Just time. because you know somebody. No, a nigga, exactly. Support yeah. me, bro. Support yeah. me. Let me feel that support. Or let me turn it down. Or when I see, damn, y'all start out there and cry. Hey, go get him. Tell him to come back and stay. Right. Some shit like that. A nigga still gonna, uh, gonna extend their because they know you coming to support, right? Right. It just, bro, I, 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 I had to push away from the entitlement spirit. I, I, hate, I hate entitlement, but it's like, what I had to learn, because even me, I was young with money, so entitlement hit me like real hard. Like people was trying to make me an uncle when I was twenty three. You know what I'm saying? Make me an uncle. Oh yeah. Like the uncle or the family. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. like I don't care what happened. Somebody die. Ring 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 ring. Somebody blah blah blah. Ring ring ring. It's about the person with the most money. That's what everybody oh, no, knows. For to. sure. Nah, dude, you for know sure. what I'm saying? But I also had to learn that you know I don't owe everybody everything. Yes. And and then I had to learn how to say no. So I want to ask you that, like, what's your strategy on saying no? Bro, really, niggas get it. You know, my sister got them. My sister, my brother, my immediate family, they might hit me in there, but they got them. They be shaking before they hit, though. No. <laughs> they, don't know, they don't know. They don't know. Like, they'll stretch it out. They gonna start. It used to be every other month. They don't stretch that shit out every six months. So, I re so if motherfucker hit me now, I know they really, really, really need it. And I ain't going to say no, but they going to get some guy down with that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do it, but for the most part, they know. Like like my sister, She if she say, <laughs> shout out to my sister, I love her to death time. All right. That's my sister. We got the same on saying that. I love that lady more than anything. That's like my 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 first love after my mom and my grandma, but really my first love, my sister. Right. But uh, she like hit, she might hit me and say, hey, if you can, that mean it ain't dirt. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna respond to that. Then two days later, I love you, bro. I ain't taking that no type of way. She let me know. But she hit me like, hey, call me, I need you. What, how much? I'm just gonna send it. Cause I already know you ain't, ain't got no options. I'm like that with my with the girls, my family, my mom, my sister, my grandma. Like my grandma, probably the one person who asked me for money the most, but I can't say no. Oh no, nah, hell no. Nah. Yeah. Cause it's like this how I see it. Oh, my grandma's seven years old. Yeah. If I don't send her this, you know, so I want my grandma to enjoy the rest of her life. Like my grandma got a, a wealthy grandson. Like the stuff she asking for don't even be like yeah. she be asked for one thousand, two thousand, stuff yeah. like that. It's chunk change to me, y'all. Go ahead, grandma. We go yeah. to the Louis store, I get her a purse, I'll get my mom a purse. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. But like nobody else can get that from me but the no. girls in my family. Yeah. Like the guys, you gotta come work for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Like you gotta come, you gotta got go to. do something. I ain't got nothing for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause but they don't they don't know that. Like they don't they see it as like, man, you treat the girls better than me. You do this better, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, it ain't that. Nah, I just told one of my kids, I ain't gonna say brother, sister, nephew, yeah. cousin, but I just told him, you know what, bro? Bust that bubble too. You don't call that at me for everything but a job. Mm. Everything. You don't call that at me for everything but a job. You had me for a car. You had me for some money. You had me to get some clothes. You had me for everything but a job. 
we got over 15, 20 employees doing mm. all type of shit. You've never said one time, bro, you need me to drive for you? Fuck that. You don't need no driver, bro. I'm legit. I can drive you. You need me to, you ain't never said that. Cause motherfuckers feel, feel like they less than. And mm. you know I'm gonna pay you double. I'm already paying you for nothing. Yeah. Then you gotta pay them more cause they family. Versus what you would have paid somebody else, it would have been way cheaper. Even though I wouldn't even hire you or nothing, I just still, nah, hell nah, bro. But it still would feel good to see that you say, if it anything you need me to do, I, I, I bro, you give me a job, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to my nigga Luck. Luck said that shit like, Luck was like, bro, I just let me got there. Whatever we doing shit, just put me in one of shit. Just put me in the play. All right. Whatever we got going on. All right, well, look, you just, you just, you just make up something. You that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. You the nigga to make sure goddamn the genius. I had to tell somebody that I like, look, <laughs> figure out what you could do for me and I got you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Make long yourself as you, an asset. Long as you can make me some money, you hire. Yes. But one thing I told them, everybody who worked with me, there has to be a ROI that come behind that. You had to be a what? A ROI, return on investment. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it gotta be a return on investment that come behind anything we do. You know what I'm saying? It can't just be some um, you know what I'm saying? Like I got a little bro, I said, look, you you detail cars, come detail my my Ferrari, my this and that. People don't even know that, you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that I do. My grandma, I pay her like four bands just to come watch my kids for a week while yeah. I go on vacation. Yeah. Overpaying, but I don't yeah. care. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like exactly. stuff like that. Like every vacation you ever seen me go on, just know somebody I paid a lot of money to watch mm -hmm. my kids. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a lot of money I tipped. You feel me? <laughs> Just flew, flew them out here. You get to drive my cars, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's your boy Lil Baby. I'm right here with Aristotle Investment. Bobby, see? You and me got whiskey juice. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, y
They can get what they want, but they want to spoil. How did you? So you had the money, but you didn't spoil your children. No, they they live they live in good, hell nah like hell nah. And then I'm a, I'm gonna get that to their mom. Like they don't need all that. Like you overdo it. They don't need all that. They ain't gonna. They don't even appreciate the shit. And I started seeing these niggas got down. I buying them high ass jeans and shit. Them nigga, nigga on them nigga playing football. Them over hell nah. You know what I'm saying? Hell nah. Yeah. Like this ain't that. So yeah. Okay. Like, okay. And I, but my grandkid. I ain't gonna try to spoil it, but I'm gonna make sure that they stay, you know what I'm saying, in activities and shit. You know? How many grandkids you have? Three, three girls. Three girls. Yeah. How that feel being a grandfather? Great. It feel great. It feel, it just give me more purpose. Like, like I tell niggas, bro, for me to make it to this point to be alive and free, bro, I'm living in my dream. Like, I gotta set some more new goals. Like, money has never been money used to be my goal when I was in the street, but I'm comfortable. You know what I'm saying? If I don't make another dollar, I'm straight. I don't have it go, which I'm going to continue to make money. But I'm living in my dream. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I feel good. I get to see my kids grow. I get to see my grandkids. So that shit just give me, like, a different purpose. Now I'm finna help them with their life. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't it ain't so much. Anything I do at this point is extra. You know what I'm saying? If I go stretch out a lot and hit for a billion dollars, it's extra. I don't feel like I can get happier than this. Mm. So you so you feel like there has to come a point in a man's life where he's like, okay, this is enough. In your opinion? Nah, I don't feel like it's enough. I'm saying well, I don't feel like I got it this is money enough, coming in. Like, let me chill and focus on life. Yeah, like, like, let me let me see if I can break it down to you. Like, what I'm saying is, I had never expected this. I never expected to live past certain certain age i never thought i could see my kids grown like i say come from where i come from and the circumstances that we come from we used to think about like how we gonna go out instead of get out and i'm gonna say that shit on every podcast i used to think about like i'm probably gonna got down you know, go to jail you know that's how we used to think in the hood because we see everybody mm. go out bad nobody get out and get money and be he lived forever like like Mm. We never seen. So you never see a person grow old and successful from the environment. No, unless they unless they change. And how many niggas change from where we from? Like like I said, my neighborhood, I can't even think of a successful nigga, man, mm. that ran the streets with us. I don't know none. So the outcome is just death or jail, or you just po. After making the money from the streets, you get po. Yes. How does that happen? Shit, I just told you I went broke a hundred times doing this shit. It's just, just bad financial literacy in your yeah, opinion? Yeah, just not no trust, scared to really have money. Because shit, if I don't spend this shit, somebody gonna steal it. Mm. I really ain't got nowhere to hide this shit at. Mm. So with the money everywhere I'm at. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like shit, when I did try to hide it down such a house, 30,000 of it gone, 12,000 mm. gone. She, everybody looking like, oh, see, how can you, you know what I'm saying? So it just, mm. man, it just, man, life learning lessons, bro. But, but get, don't get me wrong. I know some smart niggas that came out these streets, but they weren't from my neighborhood. Mm. So, you know what I'm saying? Niggas have to be an athlete or something. So like I say, anything at this point that I get from life, from here on out, it's extra because I used to pray just to see my kid get grown. They grown, now I'm seeing my grandkids. I can't even lie to you. Like, I feel like that's the mentality of a black man regardless. No matter if you in the streets or not, you still feel like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, cause even if you not in the streets, you find yourself at a gas station in Atlanta at the wrong time in the wrong area, you can get ran down on your mm -hmm. life gone or mm -hmm. car accident, this and that. So I don't think my, my tomorrow is more entitled than any man's tomorrow. You get exactly. what I'm saying? That's that's my mentality. But you can goddamn speed that shit up from the shit that we were doing. This yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, can yeah. like you you're more you're more prone. <laughs> yeah. To get your shit knocked loose, <laughs> the goddamn. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> but hell yeah, nigga, successful black <coughs> black man. You putting up in that motherfucker ride with you and your wife just thinking you don't think it's sweet. I know you scrap, you same way. You ready to goddamn right. bring that army shit back out if you have to. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's survival of the fittest, regardless right. if yeah, you're successful. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And if you black, saying. fuck successful. You just a black nigga, nigga, nigga be having a bad day at the gas station. You be a poor nigga, nigga blow your brains out just because he got a bad day. Yeah. Like fuck you looking at nigga, nothing nephew. 
I can't wait to nan that nigga. Nan, God bless you, son. <laughs> no, Cause I don't want to do what I do to your ass. So go on, bro. That's that's your mentality now. Bro, yes, non confrontational. Bro. Non confrontational. I see a nigga. I speak to him first. You could be my op. What's up, nephew? I'm, I don't know you, my op. But what's up, nephew? You good? Woo 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 woo. You know what I'm saying? Nigga can say, uh, uh, nigga, nigga can be in front of me in line. Hey, put this stuff on mine. You looking crazy with tattoo? Hey, put this stuff on mine. And got now, get put the gas on mine, bro. I got the car, nephew. Woo -woo. I don't want no problem. Right. Cause I don't want to go to where I would go to, and now I'm back to bad guy. We knew you ain't chained back. We knew you was a fuck nigga. Mm. So I ain't trying to do that. So before a nigga, nigga step on my shoes club. My bad, bro. My bad. No. <laughs> my bad, bro. At what age did that happen? <laughs> now, when bro. You about four, when you had your grandkid, your first grandkid. No, bro. This shit just happening now. It's, I'm still developing this person. But, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nigga step on my feet. My bad, bro. Now if you step on with aggression, like mm -mm, now you go. You, I ain't got no choice but to be a man. Yeah. But if I know it's a mistake, I'm letting you know I know it's a mistake. King is good. Now you walk around and do it again, well, I'm going to bust your goddamn head up. Because mm. now you just trying my manhood. But if you, you know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm I'm not looking at it from a pessimistic way off the rip no more. Yeah. You how you be looking for it, face fighting and everything. Right now. No. You know what I'm saying? Niggas be on that. I ain't on that tight time, bro. Because there's so many niggas that love me for real now. So I had to get off that. So many niggas I see, niggas be like, but niggas don't be knowing how to be. Listen, bro. I done spoke to so many niggas who wasn't finished spoke to me, speak to me and, and be like, bro, I ain't know how to approach you. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like I see niggas out be like, what's up, bro? With the head up. He be like, bang. But you knew that with me. What's up, bro? Woo -woo. But I ain't know how to say what's up. Because the temperature of the world. Mm. Niggas don't even know how to show you the love that they want to. Mm. So I'm saying I'm coming with love first. I'm coming with the energy positive first so you can know, bro, I'm approachable, whatever. I'll follow you on the ground right now. I'm following damn near 4,000 people that I don't know. Mm. This like thing, this right then and there, we locked in, in, bro. I'm laughing at the shit. You can send me shit. I'm entertain. I use this shit for entertainment. I post your shit, whatever. I don't care. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, it just, I don't know. I feel like what you push off is what you get back, bro. You right, you right. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I definitely respect the uh, the evolution that you yeah, went through. like the sure. epitome of it, bro. The epitome of evolution, bro. And I can't, like, don't, don't get it fucked up. Some days I wake up, I be glitched up. I ain't gonna lie, I be glitched up, and I just stay on in the house. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The day ain't the day, bro. Let these four have the day, you know what I'm saying? Right. And shit, bro, you know, it's a, it's a process every day, bro. It's a process every day, bro. So I want to ask this because I feel like a lot of young men like to know this about men when they're older. Like, so y'all still have y'all days, right? Like where you kind of like, okay, I feel down today. And then you still, you know Most what I'm saying? Most of the days though. Most of the days. Most of the days you're going to feel, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to feel down, but you're going to have like those moments, bro. Those moments just come about because when you, when you, when you like, like, and I, this ain't no two my own horn. Like I've been a boss since I was a little boy. Right. Like a little boy, like when the first time the hustle nigga, when we got down walking the way field of tote bag, I'm bringing five niggas to tote bag. Like, bro, you tote bag, we're gonna put all the money in one pot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Whatever we get, you bring me the money, we're gonna put all the money in one pot. And we're gonna got them go have, a, have us a feast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We bring, we got a two nigga, we, out of the five niggas that tote bags and pumping gas all that day, we might have us $30, $40, and we got a nigga who steal. So, bro, you go steal the food out of Wayfield, the sandwiches and all that shit, and we're gonna buy us some weed to smoke with it. We 19 years old, just saying, 11 years old. Like, I'm already had the mindset of, even in school and candy, like candy, like um, 25 cent a pack, 10, 10 cent pack of nine later. We send a one nine later for a nickel. I never understood why a nigga would come to school and buy one nine later for me for a nickel when they could have bought a pack for 10 cents. Or 25 cents. I never understood that. Mm. Supply and demand. You got the demand right now. Well, you got the supply and it's a demand for now later. Kids love candy. So. But I'm saying, why them niggas didn't buy their own now later? Like, you had niggas spend a dollar with a nigga. Like, bro, you got a dollar? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's third, right? Okay? You got a whole five? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know, but I always had a hustle mentality like pencils. I had pencils, pencil sharpeners. Nigga, whatever nigga, like, be looking like, hey, ain't nobody, nigga, I got it. Back then, I got a nigga in damn near every class with a bomb. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I always been like that mindset. So when you, with you being that, like that, back to the original, uh, what made me say that, with you being that, it's kind of hard, bro, for you not to um, feel like you should take care of everybody. Fair. When you always have. So it kind of weigh on you when you can't or you don't. But when you're trying to transition to this person that be like, bro, it's killing me. They don't realize that some days we just like, look, today is about me. Like I gotta, like you, I know I'm walking around, I'm smiling, I'm this and that, but I don't really think about some shit. Real shit. You get what I'm saying? Like, like, and I'm trying to like, you know, I know you need help, but you know what I'm saying? Who's gonna help me? Bro, you know what I mean? A nigga told me this shit, bro, and it was a it was a nigga pushing a button. Crackhead nigga. That nigga said, son, you gotta quit, you gotta quit. Quit making all the withdrawals. You're gonna be empty. Look at yourself like a bank account, son. All the withdrawals, no deposits. Yeah, it's gonna be empty. I'm like, you mm. right. Mm. Yeah. All this, even, even mentally, like you only thing you're doing is pouring into other people, but you ain't nobody pouring into you. You're gonna be empty sooner or later. If you right. pour out all your energy, you're gonna be empty. You pour out all your money, yeah, it's gonna be empty. You pour out all, you're gonna be empty. You mm. gotta have people, you gotta either make deposits within yourself. Or get people around you that makes the positive. Uh, financially, spiritually, emotionally. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I went through that because I lived on the south side. I was living off Buckner Row. I, I bought uh, Jason Jeter's old house. Yeah, shout out to Jason Jeter. Jason Jeter okay. texted me just so he's going to give me a pair of hiking boots. Shout oh, out that's Jason. hard. Yeah, yeah. So I bought, you ever been in his old house? It was nah. on Buckner? Yeah, so uh, Young Dro used to live in that house. Uh, Fantasia used to live in that house. I ended up selling that house. But when I lived on that at, at that house, it was on the south side of Atlanta. My whole family from the south side, like Cleveland Ave, Riverdale, mostly where my family from between those spots. So they pulling up, you know what I'm saying? And they didn't realize, look, I can't work under these conditions. Like y'all think I made it, cause you see the, cause you see, you know, at that time I had a vet, and I had the, uh, I had the vet, the raw, all that. I had, I had all the same cars I have now. They looking at everything you got and thinking like you done. Like mm -hmm. we gonna come in. So I'm talking about every day a fan I knew like a different family member at my house. And I had to explain to them, like, look, I'm about to sell this house and move up north. And they like, why? I said, because of y'all. <laughs> like, I got I got to go yeah. up north because y'all won't let me work. Yeah. You know, and I don't wanna, you know, tell you like, hey, you can't come over here and you live down the street. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they ain't realize like what's cause here's another thing. I was in the army. I was away for six years, so I'm used to hustling alone. I made my first million while I was in the army. Yeah. I made this away from family. Yeah. I was stationed in Savannah. Yeah. So they don't know that's the type of environment I'm used to. I didn't have nobody come to Savannah. I moved to Atlanta with a M, whole family pulling up every day. Do you feel day. like you still know them same people? If you be around a person, like, if you be around, if you be away from around a person more than, like for that long, do you feel like you still know that person? Nah. Me neither. Yeah, like, you're right. Like you may be going to People jail, change. I gotta make sure you still you, buddy. Yeah, you right. And like, you could be a whole nother nigga. You could have a different, like a mindset shift. Niggas don't understand, like niggas They be, don't... yeah, dudes from high school be like, bro, you remember me like push up, push up. Like, I don't know you. You could set me up. I don't know what's going on with you. It's been. You. I graduated in 2014, it's 2024, that's 10 years ago, bro. I ain't pulling up on nothing. And everything is different now. Our, yeah. our circumstances are different. So different. My circumstances could make you be somebody else. I told a dude, he was like, how do I deal with my old homies, blah, 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 this and that. And I said, listen, bro, why do you know these people? I said, I'll tell you why. Because your parents decided to settle in the same area. Not because y'all got something in common. Thank you. Not because y'all... Bro, this and that, we read the same books. We listen to that. the choir, bro. We, you know what? we preaching settled. to the choir. I said shit on a whole nother podcast. Right. If I didn't, will I choose you to be my friend as an adult? I don't why you my friend because we grew up around each other and, right. and, 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 and or my family. Oh, you my family. Mm -hmm. Would I choose you today to ride around Atlanta with? No. <laughs> would I even know you? Mm. Damn. Imagine the nigga that you know that you wouldn't even deal with. I wouldn't even, bro, I wouldn't even dap your hand if you weren't supposed to be. Spy niggas like that. Thank you. <laughs> they don't, but they don't want to hear that. And then I always bring this up to every OG. Snoop Dogg, he gave the best game when he was like, when y'all hear at first, but then when you elevate, you elevate mentally, spiritually, all that. But right there is a gap. You know what I'm saying? 
So it's like you always got to come down to their level yep. every single time. Yep. And they don't realize that. But then they yep. don't realize you would be happier if they would have at least met you halfway. Yeah. But every single time I come around, I got to talk that old bullshit. Yep. We talking about the streets. Yep. We talking yep. about this. We yep. talking about high school. Yep. We talking about ball. Yep. So what's your perspective on that? Nigga, you just said it. At the end of the day, it's just like me. I don't go to clubs. So if a nigga calling me, like my buddies don't call me to go to no club. They know I don't go to clubs. Yeah, sir. Unless a nigga gonna pay us to come in or if I just feel like R&B wins with my wife or something. But other than that, the fuck, now I've been in the club for 20, 30 years. The fuck, I, what, what's in there? Same shit? So right. now I got to come around and play like I'm having a good time just to make you feel like I'm a real nigga. Mm. Hell no, nah, you better come to see the all to this Lincoln Us event. Come to the Gallery Anderson spot to this uh, perspective with Bank. Nigga, I'm doing that type of shit that makes me happy while I drink red wine and cross my leg and shit. That's what I'm on. I ain't no goddamn standing in the club, nigga mad because I ain't dead or got a Rico. That nigga want, that nigga want me to have a Rico. That nigga want me to be dead, baby. Right. You know what I'm saying? Nigga standing over there mad like, you should have got one. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's just how this shit go, bro. Right. Everybody not happy that you can shift your mindset, bro, because they can't or they they won't, because they can, they right. just won't. I love to see people, it makes me want to be around you more if I see you picking up yourself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, but if I see that you have not grown, yes, that makes me, I hate to say it, but make me want to cut you loose. You have to. You have to, because at the end of the day, I ain't gonna pick up nothing but some negative shit around you, even if it's energy. Even if it's conversation. Like, bro, listen, man. All my niggas, bald head included, little one day, they used to send me shit of fights and shit. Them niggas don't even send me no shit like that no more. Mm. Them niggas only send me motivational shit, Damn. funny shit, and cars and shit. Them niggas don't even, like, you know how niggas send nigga negative shit, like, yeah. who locked up, who told who. I don't get none of that in my deal no more. I just get all funny shit and ladies and playing shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Spiritual shit. I don't, like, people. Like one thing about it, bro. If a nigga, if a nigga respect you, bro, they gonna push you towards where they see you go, need to be going. Facts. You know what I'm saying? If a nigga love you and respect you, they gonna be like, like them niggas be having conversation amongst each other. Like, don't tell a brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I already know it. Yeah. Like, don't tell, bro. You know that nigga gonna be tripping like to tell that preacher shit, bro. It ain't that. It yeah. just like a nigga because. I'm gonna go too far. Then y'all gonna say, I'm tri bank tripping. Well, why the fuck did you put it on my mind? <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Keep me sane, keep me on this narrow track, keep me on, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, bro, you know weed make a nigga mellow. Why you want bank schnock pot? You give me some power, I'm gonna be crazy as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you better keep me on these shrooms and some weed, some chill shit. You trying to get a crazy ass nigga some mileage, some powder and all that shit, and then right. you wonder why he snap. Yeah. It is the same thing with your mindset. Yeah. Send me all these affirmations and shit that be like, hell yeah. Send me all these quotes and motivation. You sending me goddamn all this shit. Red wrong, red wrong. I told Savvy the other night, bro, I can't listen to that shit. You going crazy. But it put me back into, you know what I'm saying? You can't, bro, you gotta. You gotta, you gotta, it's all over what you consume. Like, I can't even watch shoot em up bang bang movies when I go to sleep at night because I'm gonna start, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna start, so I listen to some Mike there or some comedy shit. I'm telling you, it's all on what you consume, bro. I definitely see what you're saying, though. And then sometimes it feels like, cause dudes be like, man, how do I grow? How do I grow? I said, listen, bro, I'm gonna tell you something you don't wanna hear, you gotta change your environment. Yeah. It's like once I moved up north, I already made them M's down south. I moved up north and I got back to that old army shit while I'm locked in by myself. No one can pull up on me. Nobody's driving to no Alpharetta yeah. from where I'm from. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Just like that. Yeah, come yeah. see me. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I never been to Alpharetta because I'm from the south side. Like, that's way too far. But yeah, like, I always tell dude, man, you got to change your environment. Facts. Like, facts. Like, them niggas call me, bro. Them niggas like, what you doing? Shit. I ain't coming. Shit. I ain't doing shit, bro. Them niggas tell you, bro, I ain't doing shit. I might not. I may just be sitting out without the TV on. No net, no net, no net. Just thank you, God. So if a dude want to get out the streets, would you um, would you encourage him to move away from his environment? Because do you believe he can get out the streets amongst having the same friends? 
you can get your mind out first. Once your mind goes, your body gonna leave anyway. You can get your mind out. Once you get your mind out, everything, whoever's supposed to be with you, gonna be with you. Once your mind shift, bro, everything gonna, it's gonna remove itself on its own. So they just gonna be like, oh, he, he they, you know what I mean? They ain't gonna be like, hey, nigga, fuck nigga. Well, I respect what he doing, bro. I'm letting bro do his thing, one or the other. So they not gonna try to, hey, bro, nah, you gotta roll with us, or nah, bro, you tripping, fuck bro, niggas, like. Niggas on the fuck me, but you, but you, but sooner they do that, they chose their side. Cause anytime, like, thing about it is, like I said, my niggas them don't wanna push me to do no bullshit. Right. They don't wanna see me, they don't even wanna feed my brain that shit. So I know they love me. Cause I know they looking at it. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know they sending it to each other, but they like, man, bank on that shit, man. Let that nigga be what he on. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that, to me, that's love, bro. Nah, for sure. Nah, you got, you definitely draw some gems. But sure, I'm going to end this thing on a high note. It's kicking it with the OGs. Got my dog, Big Bang. We just dropped so much game. Talking about financial literacy. We're talking about getting out of the streets. We're talking about elevating uh, health wise, mentally, whatever, man. You're going to enjoy this episode. Anything you want to say? Be you at all costs. You're gonna lose a lot of people being you. You're gonna lose a lot of people you thought loved you. Just be you though, man, because at the end of the day, you ain't gonna run out of you ain't gonna run out of content being yourself. Thanks. Reason why it's so hard for these niggas to be a content, cause you trying to build a character. I ain't gonna run out of being bank. I'm gonna keep being me. And then that that's the easy way to make a nigga draw the, you drawing the line. Fuck with me or not. Either way, nigga, like I told you, nigga, bro, if, if I forget about everybody that I know right now in this moment, like I probably know 100,000, maybe a million people, how many more people can I meet in this world? If I get amnesia and forget everything, but I got my common sense, I don't know nobody in this room, how many people can I meet? So you ain't got to, you, can, you can't give a fuck about who you lose. Mm -hmm. That's right. Everybody's replaceable, bro. That's facts. Right. I'm talking about in business, in relationship, you can get another wife. Only thing you can't get is another uh, sibling, grandma, dad, or whatever, whatever. You can't get them back. You can't, you can't get them back. But as far as people, friends, and people that make, um, draw all these, draw your life up for you, you can, man, fuck them bitches, man. Fuck y'all, nigga. Fuck you. Fuck you. Like, straight up. Fuck you. Am I tripping? Nah, hell nah. Fuck you. Because at the end of the day, no matter what I do, if, if you add me for, for, um, for something, and I do it, you nigga really could have put some extra on. <laughs> he got all that money. Bro, you asked me for $50,000 and I gave it to you. I could have really just went on and gave you a hundred. Nigga find a reason to be mad at a nigga, oh, man. Oh, yeah. For sure. Like, a nigga to sit at home, think about his problems, and think that you supposed to already know that he has some problems you supposed to call him and fix it like, Damn, bro, the roof leaking, man. Nigga Aristotle could have got the roof fixed. How yeah. the fuck I know your roof leak me leaking, nigga? No, that's facts. Nigga definitely wants you to solve his problems. Yeah, regardless of what, like finally, because I really want to hate on you. So now I gotta make my problem yours. I make oh, no, nah, now I gotta make the excuse for my problems. And you did. Are you hear a nigga talk about everything what another nigga could do for them beside what they can do for themselves? I done heard so many artists, bro, them niggas ain't trying to pull no nigga up. One thing about it, bro, if you you work hard enough, you 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 you're a business man. You go around and young nigga, you see like whatever in whatever field that you do, you see where hard enough. Hey, we need to get him, cuz. You know what I'm saying? We need to get him. You gonna help him. You understand what I'm saying? Like this, say Vincent. If you seen a nigga who do damn good behind the scenes shit, cause ain't nobody here doing behind the scenes right now, behind the scenes, and you see it work like, man, that nigga fine. He don't know what he got. Get him cause tell him goddamn we got a job for him. Just because you see the effort that he's doing before he even asked the nigga for anything. You get what I'm saying? Right. You get what I'm saying? Like if a right. nigga, just say if a nigga had a shoe plug, right? right. He ain't got but five, five pair of shoes in his arsenal. But you see the nigga flipping them five pair of shoes. Like a motherfucker. Like Shawty got there killing him, putting up his little $20 there, whatever he making. Nigga like you, Aristotle, you see that. No, I see that in him. All he need is somebody to invest in him. But a nigga selling them five pair of shoes will get mad because a nigga don't see it or didn't see it on time. Or artists get mad because I ain't got a feature from Drake yet. Bro, ain't time for no Drake feature. 
He gonna come when it's time. Or if not, keep working. Fuck him. You was always ask me that. They be like, Aristotle, how did you build your team? And I'm like, well, for one, I seeked out the talent first. And then on top of that, I took care of the talent. And then I let them grow with me. Yes. Like whatever I was paying somebody four years ago and what I'm paying them now, I'm paying them way more because I know you're valuable. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So, you know, like. In fact. Yeah. So like, I, got, I got a huge payroll, but the thing is, I got the best. I got the best camera guy. I got the best right hand man. I got the best guys trading with me. I got the, the reason best why, everything. The reason why niggas is the best is because them niggas ain't making no excuses in order to lose, bro. Niggas make excuses just to be losers, bro. Nah, 2024, sure. niggas feel like they, this shit's supposed to happen right now. Like, that's another disconnect that's going on. Like, the grind, like, niggas, when I say niggas, I'm just saying, like, the temperature of, of, of the climate of it, this ain't just Atlanta, it's every city. Niggas feel like, niggas feel ashamed to start from the bottom. That's the issue. They they want, I tell people, don't compare your chapter one to somebody chapter 10. Thank you. Or a nigga chapter 45. Nigga, I'm 45. And you you 23 years old comparing yourself to bank? You know the shit I went through to be to even be me. You know what I'm saying? So a nigga like. Bro, he ain't ready. I gotta wait till I get this. No, bro, turn them cameras on. The film dusty, nigga. It's a lot of niggas dusty. They're gonna gonna grow with you. Show them they can grow. People That's why all the biggest artists are the biggest artists. You can go back on Twenty One Seven page and see he still got it on there when the nigga dusty hell. How nap is a motherfucker? Oh, a nappy head ass nigga can come up. You get what I'm saying? That's when niggas fail to realize that it, it been producers and shit. Mike Wheeler had to goddamn be in Patchwork, then leave Patchwork, go to Snake on it, do this, do this. Like, niggas ain't thinking about what these producers really had to go through. You just seeing the nigga highlight real now. They see the rise, not the shine. Exactly. I mean, they see she they keeping see the, them with yeah. dirty as hell up there. Doing that shit. Drake, dirt, all them niggas. Them niggas, they showed you, bro. You have to start right here. So if I got to goddamn go get me a job through the daytime to pay, niggas don't want to work either, to pay for my videos that I'm going to shoot at night. Nigga, that's what I got to do. That's, nigga, that's the story. That, that, that's what's going to help the next nigga to be able to do it. You get what I'm saying? I think that's the problem with my generation the most is they don't want to go through anything hard during their journey. And they always ask me, like, how do I avoid? How do I avoid? I'm like, you can't. You can't. Them facts, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 can't. like, they like, Aristotle, I want to be just like you. I'm like, okay, you want to be like me? But you got to realize my mindset. I did six years in the military. If you got, if you want what I have, you got to go through exactly what I went through. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So that means you got to blaze your own path. You can't beat me. You got to do it your way. Because exactly. if you try to copy everything I did, you're going to miss something. Yes. You already missing the discipline because I done did six years in the military. I done did six years of waking up at 5 a.m. And, 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 and did got out with an honorable discharge. So that mean, you know what I'm saying? I was barely late. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I granted, you know, I, you know I'm know, i a young nigga. I'm going to get late sometime, but like not late enough to where I lose my rank and my pay. So you know basically what, what you saying is and what I'm saying is, bro, it ain't no one way to be successful. It ain't it ain't no way to. Mm -mm. Only way to be successful is mindset. Put your, get your mind focused on what you need to do to be successful. That's it. Niggas can give you little pointers and shit and you take it. You still got to take it and mold it for your own. You ain't going to be able to do what he did. You're not him. And then it be situations. I always tell people, one thing I know about everybody who's successful is they went through a time period where they got blessed and that blessing was just for them. Yes. It wasn't for it can't yeah. it can't be recreated. God yeah. gave that to them. Yeah. So you might try to recreate a man's story, try to steal his swag, try to steal his lingo, try to steal everything he got, but you missing the anointed part. Somewhere Thanks. down the line, God gave something to him or her. And then a lot of shit too, though. Uh, I'm gonna leave it. God, God will hold your blessing up because of who you gonna bless with your blessing. Niggas gotta know that too. Elaborate on that. God will hold up your blessing mm -hmm. because he know who you thinking you want to bless and they don't deserve. I don't want to bless them. I want to bless you. So since you so stupid mm -hmm. about this motherfucker, I'm going to hold your blessing. Or he know 
You know how a dude would be like, man, when I turn, I'm going to shit on all y'all niggas. He know that he going to that. Yeah, that, that, yeah, yeah. Dudes, yeah, them never niggas don't never get that, get that blessing, blessing, yeah. But it's so many of them niggas, boy, boy, who can't wait. Your reason is for another nigga, boy, you a bitch. Yeah. You ain't going to never have shit. If you do, you ain't going to keep it. You better hide that shit till you get it. I, I hear that so many times. Boy, when I turn up, can't wait to shit on y'all niggas. Y'all don't fuck with me now, you don't fuck with me later. But you think, do you shit. think people can be around you and, and be holding up your blessing though? I just say, Vincent, if, if you didn't go to the military and get that, what's your name, and you grew up on the South Side, but you had the same thing, same mentality, do you think it would have clicked as well without the discipline you went and got and knowing it? Because it cause, seems to me is, bro, you really, because I feel like you have to be somewhat selfish to succeed, and I never was. You have to kind of have that yeah. selfish button. You have to, bro. You have I can't, to. I can't say I'm selling. My payroll, hundred. But you got to. But, they, but they work. <laughs> Shit, they yeah. work though. Like, true. They work. You I'm talk. saying. I'm saying like for like people pleasing. Not hell, not 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 working. Like mm -hmm. people that work works. I'm saying, but if you want to say no, you'll say no, right? Oh, I'm not gonna answer. Yeah, I, I'm selfish as far as like, I don't. I'm not going to insert myself to just help a bunch of people. I stay out of the way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, thank you. I don't, thank you. And, yeah. and, and the assets ain't. So like you said, I move from here to here so I won't be so accessible. But you wanna know what the difference is between me and most? You grew up in a community. I never lived anywhere consecutively for more than four years. See, that was a blessing. That's so that was a blessing for yeah, me because yeah. I ain't got no niggas who can say, Man, I grew up with that nigga. He owed me. We we placed in the sandbox. My mom kept moving for that's some a reason. Shit, that's a that's blessing. That's the biggest blessing yeah, I could have yeah, seen. Cause I was seeing niggas who grew up like, oh, I grew up. At first I used to be jealous, like, man, mom, I wish I would have went elementary, middle, high school with just a group of friends. I ain't got, bro, to this day, I don't got no day ones. That's, that's a blessing. So much that's a blessing. Because I, I get to keep, no cause I get to keep my money. Nigga, I ain't got no nigga who be like, bro, I did this for you back in the day, so you owe me this. I ain't got that. That's a hell of a blessing, bro. Because nigga feel boy. like, bro, since I know you got beat up in the cafeteria in the second grade, yep. you a hoe, but you owe me. No. Damn. <laughs> I'm just saying that some yeah. simple shit. I, I remember, bro, I remember you ain't had a lot of money, bro. I gave you a piece of my cookie. It's just how petty niggas mind be, bro. Y'all don't understand nah, the sure. shit that you hear sure. niggas say. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I do feel like it's, it's such thing as blessing blocker. Because you ever seen yeah. niggas that, that move a, a people, even want women. Women can be in a relationship and she can be with a nigga. And you see her got down, get out of the relationship like, damn, baby girl, glowing now. That mm. nigga had that bitch down up under the weather. Right. You know what I'm saying? It is the same thing. Like, you could be. Running with a crew or running with a female or running with anybody. It's your environment that sometimes it, your mindset can't change. Mm -mm. Cause you don't wanna make it seem like you being brand new or make it seem like I done changed. How the fuck you gonna work hard and stay the same like the niggas say? Nigga ain't working hard to stay the same. Y'all nigga crazy. That's that's insanity. That's their favorite bar, you change. I can't wait. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I tell them now. When niggas say, um, you acting different, bro. Don't say that. That made me feel some type of way. Mm. I'm not acting. I am different, boy. Mm. I'm different. I ain't acting. This ain't an act. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, nigga, take that off. Just say, boy, you different. I, yeah, you right. I take that in a positive way. See, niggas take certain shit in a negative way because that's how we groom to take it. All right, bro, you different now. You right, brother. Because that nigga I used to be one shit. Right. So I I approve your message, nigga. I am. It's a lot of hating shit people say. Like people who peaked in high school would be like, oh, uh, people who was lame in high school, trying to become whatever. Now I hate that statement. He wasn't really like, lame. He wasn't really lame. He was focused. The nigga, you got to think everything that that was good was bad to us coming up. Exactly. A nigga that's focused is a nerd. Exactly. How the fuck he a nerd? He focused. Because he wasn't no. invited to the parties and all that. He wasn't this and that. No, but, bro, I'm telling you, we can take this shit a whole nother route. But I, I'm telling you, like, I ain't that one woke nigga. You know how these niggas be woke, but I'm awakened to myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit that I see that don't make no sense, you know, like, like we just talking about the nerd shit. Just imagine if a nigga would focus with this gift that a nigga already born with, this go get a hustler mentality. Like how you went to the military and got focused. Just imagine if I went and got that same discipline and a young nigga, what I would be. I'll probably be the governor. Mm. Like able to actually move people, you know what I'm saying? Able to actually move people around in a snap and got the common, got the um the uh spiritual sense that I have, the common sense that I have along with the goddamn 
uh, discipline and the knowledge. Man, a nigga, man, man, a nigga been assassinating me, man. Now you see how I feel, right? Now I feel way too powerful. I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, boy, like I don't got damn. Ain't no way I you can won't. lose. Yeah, like you got you you got the instincts of a street nigga. Yeah, cause that's what it is. The whole family, that's what it is. Yeah. You got them instincts, and you smart, and you healthy, and you spiritually uh motivated, and you and you poised, cause you got a family. So you family or it's it just too much. And niggas too powerful, bro. That's why I stay out of the way. Niggas be like, why you don't come here? Like my brother be like, why you don't? Why you won't come to my? Not my brother, but like a dude I know. Like, why you won't come to my rap show? I'm like, bro, I can't be on no damn South Side at the level I am at fucking 12 o'clock at night with a bunch of broke niggas. You but know what I'm saying? Food. Like, 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 I'm like, but what you can do is you can meet me in Buckhead and up, nigga. Like, hey, <laughs> Midtown and up. Like, it ain't that. It's just I got more to lose now. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. Yeah, me. I used to, man, when I came, every I used to be stationed in Savannah. I get gas on Cleveland Ave. I went there today. I used to get, I'm talking about as soon as I come home, I'm on Cleveland. Yeah. Every single time. 100% of the time. Yeah, yeah. When I come home, you can find me on Cleveland. Yeah. Around my dad, around this. That that uh burnt down McDonald's on Cleveland Ave. My they folks stay in the Well, it well it ain't burnt down. It's oh. it's uh you, you remember the I'm Piggly not, Wiggly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, Cleveland yeah, yeah, Ave. Yeah, 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 my yeah, folks yeah. stay in the apartments kind of behind Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that uh that abandoned elementary school. Yeah. My folks used to stay across the street from that house, right across the street. That uh playground, young thug, all them dudes used to bang on. I used to see them when I was younger, cause I used to play at that park yeah. when I was a kid. But dudes be like, okay, but you ain't street. I'm like, that's because just cause somebody lived there don't mean like my grandma worked at the Cyclorama. She retired from the Cyclorama. You know the Cyclorama, yeah, 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 Georgia sure. history, yeah, yeah, right? Sure. Nigga don't even know about that. I used yeah. to go there when I was a kid. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? My dad, that's why I'm so Atlanta verse, cause he's a Come and give us cyclorama knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I always tell people your environment don't make you who you are. You never lived in the hood if you don't understand the hood. Cause I was like, man, cause I used to uh I used to live off Conley Road too. Yeah, I know that. All the apartment, yeah. Southern Trace where I used to yeah. be at. Yeah. So <laughs> so um that's where I seen my first people first time I ever seen people get killed. Yeah. Like shot, all that. Like I didn't even know stuff like that was happening. Yeah. I lived the real boys in the hood story. My mom had a nice house in Union City. My dad lived off Cleveland and Conley Road. He switched from apartments from Cleveland to Conley all the time. Yeah. Like that's just how he was. But I say all that to say your environment don't make you. No. You know what I'm saying? It, like, it, it don't make you, it just make you have an excuse if you want one. Yeah. That's it to me. Your environment don't make you because your mind can be there, but I mean, your body can be there, your mind don't have to. If, if, you, if you want something, you want something. If you don't, you don't, bro. My mind was never there. Like, when I was a kid, I had two streams of income at nine years old while we were living in Southern Trace off Conley. First stream of income, I would knock on people's door in Southern Trace and take out their trash for a dollar. Second stream was I would walk kids home because they didn't trust they kid to even walk from the bus to the apartment safe. Like, I lived in that type, you know. So... I used to walk kids home. I used to have two kids. They used to pay me $10 every Friday. Mm -hmm. So every week at nine years old, I was making a $30. So when you said that you always been making money at a young age, mm -hmm. and then now you here, I'm like, damn, every dude I know who up was hustling since he was a boy. Oh, no, nah, you better. See, that's why I said I wouldn't change nothing because if I didn't, I probably wouldn't have had that in me. Like, if I was always giving shit, I wouldn't have had that in me. Like, I used to look at my grandma, cause my grandma raised her, I used to look at her, she had so many other people to take care of. I used to feel like, as a little boy, I wanna take care of her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I wanna take care of you, ma. You know what I'm saying? So when I got of age, hey, you, your property tax every year, that's what I started. You ain't gotta never worry about paying them. Cause that was a highest bill every year. She had two property taxes. I started taking care of them. Yeah, okay, cool. Now I'm able to buy you TVs and whatever you want, ma, whatever, however, you know what I'm saying? She used to do her little thing. I'll pay for her re-up here and there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She, whatever. So she, man, that's just how I looked at it. Like, somebody gonna have to do it. My daddy went to chain gang at an early age. She. Yeah, same. I used to have to visit my dad all the time. Yeah, she, somebody had to do it. So she, I'm glad, I'm glad. Everything I went through, I went through. That's why my kids know them niggas don't, they, they hate calling me. I promise them niggas, I don't think, let me see. Now I want to, Kashad, my baby boy, I um he called me and said something about the dentist because I think one of their teeth were messed up. And um 
he just asked me about my dentist. Like, who did what dentist you went to? So I told him, yeah, then don't worry about it, just go down there. And I started his uh proceed from pay to start his shit. He the baby. Mm -hmm. But other than that, that was like a year or two ago. Man, my kid don't have me for shit. I don't give a fuck. I ain't gonna know if they doing bad. Mm. Cause they know what come with that. Oh, you gonna chew their ass off? Not not on no goddamn cursing shit. I'm gonna do it, but you gotta you gotta hear me out now. You gotta hear me out for mine. And what you gonna hear gonna make you feel like this. Mm. Cause it ain't no excuse. Everybody fall on hard time, but it ain't no excuse when you ain't been doing what you supposed to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to point that out. Well, you know, you would just say, what's the name doing Blase Squazze? I seen what you had on. That shit, that was 1200 Now you asked me for 1000 Like, I'm going to make sure you put your priority. I'm going to make sure I throw your priorities in your face. And I think that helped them because even if they done fucked up, they ain't going to have me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. They gonna make their own way and I respect that. You know what I was thinking about too? I was like, you know what? I feel like we could work on, just every generation gets better, is passing down businesses. Giving our children, cause that's what I had to realize. I'm like, I could teach my son this stock market shit. Or I can open up some businesses, do this and that, and put my folks in place. Mm -hmm. So even I had to realize that I'm like, I, real shit. I don't even got shit to pass down to him, but yeah. knowledge. But I really want something to pass down to you. And I say this to say because, and I still got the footage to this day because I knew I was going to use it one day. I went to Greece. I went to Santa Rini, Greece. Uh, it was like three years ago. And I noticed every single shot was family owned. And I was like, but the thing that shocked me was how ahead they were. I was like, who bought this? They were like, my great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather. One of them owned a the shop and said, my great-great-grandfather owned it, but I don't know his name. How the fuck you don't know your great? Like, it's like that sometimes over there. Like, they got so much generational wealth, they just working in the shop and they don't even know who bought it first. It makes sense. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but they know sense. this a family member who bought it. And I said, that's what we doing wrong. We not giving them something yeah, that they can right. just go in and just work. We need like fail proof system. Like I got, I don't care if it's a coin laundromat. I don't care if it's a restaurant. I don't care if it's a museum. I don't care what it is. I'm like, I'm going to pass down something. And if you ever fall on hard times, well, for one, I'm going to make just, you manage it just, this it just, shit. It's just the family that you got to have with that too. You got, they have to be raised up like that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Cause, exactly. You know what I mean? The family businesses, when niggas try to pass them down to niggas, niggas just let that shit just, Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, so that's much That's what they shit. said too. Like you, it's this system where you can buy people's businesses. And I was like, who the fuck would sell their business? And then when they broke it down to me, it was that. It was somebody about to die and they family suck. They don't even want to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. They, they rather sell it to you than let their family run it. I was like, damn, that's how you buy businesses? You got to wait till a dude about to pass and hope his kid's too spoiled or entitled to even, damn. This shit fucked up because unless unless they was groomed, like you said, they raised up in the three yeah. years old, they run around that, you know what I'm saying? They run around the um they run around the business three years old and they grow up inside the business. Other than that, man, if they not trained for it, to me, don't fuck that shit up. Yeah, yeah. But nah, that's the way though, cause we ain't we ain't passing nothing down now. We just passing down money. Yeah. We could pass that down, but they need like cash. They need cash flow passed down to them, cause a lot of white folks get that. Yeah, they nah, get yeah, farms, yeah. businesses, this and that passed down, and some and some people make it better. The next generation make it better. Nah, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Nah, but I think what you're doing is great, bro. How you pushing, pushing on, pushing, pushing this financial literacy on people, bro. You and everybody else in this space, man. I think what you're doing is dope. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. Keep going. I learn a lot from you. You know what I'm saying? And when I get, when I, you know, I call your phone. Hey, what did mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But nah, what you're doing is dope. And then you actually proof that a nigga can get it from nothing. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Nigga can get it from nothing. Nigga, you just sit there and say, I cut out, save my army checks. Nigga, I made a million dollars before I left the army. That's real shit. Cause niggas mind ain't even think about that. Nigga come home with excuses. I did all this shit with these white folks and they got down. Right. You know what I'm saying? You went and made, made a play, bro. And 
You inspiration, bro. Especially to your generation, 27 years old. Niggas ain't doing that. Niggas ain't thinking like that. That's true. At first, them niggas, at first, them niggas, like, your peers probably looking like, man, well, nigga went to the arm fight them for me, nigga. And then nigga done with some traps, some stock, man. And then, now them same nigga looking like, damn, mm -hmm. bro. But y'all seen the way. Y'all just didn't believe I knew the route. You know what I'm saying? Niggas want to get in the car when you done made it. Yeah. Yeah, nah, bro. You could have got now. I'm still telling y'all. I ain't, I ain't had to tell you. You see it. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. A lot of dudes definitely like that. Like what you said, man. Like, I just feel like I saw a path and it came. You know how, like, you rich, not by mistake, but, but like, like, people like, Cause you know how dudes wanted to be a, a financial guru after 2020. I was doing this since 2017. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I was already rich when the pandemic happened. So it just turned up that whole thing. You get know what I'm saying? But like I said, uh, what really happened was I came up with a system and it was, I was like, okay, if I invest 3,000 a month with a 15% with a return, how long will it take me to become a millionaire? So I saw a chart. Remember how they were saying like you could retire by 65 if you deposit $100 a week? Mm -hmm. So I kept moving the number up $100 to see which, what was attainable for me. So I noticed every time I put $100 more, I think I knocked off two years of retirement. So it went from 65 all the way, I was 21 when I, when I saw that. So I was like, I'm gonna be a millionaire by the time I'm 31 if I can invest 3,000 a month for a 15% return. You saying you took the long way right there. Just even on that little shit, that before you started. That's before, yeah. that was before. So I took the long route. I it was really started with a 10 year plan. I yeah. didn't expect, I started at 21 and made my first million at 23. So I took a 10 year route, but it was all cause of this chart. This chart made me rich to this day. It was like, shit, if you, so then like, I. Once it was $400, so that's uh, $400 a month, but it was really weekly. You had to deposit some money a week. So I did. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do 3000 a month, and then 3000 a month with the sweet spot. That's the sweet spot. If you can afford to invest 3000 a month and get a 15% return in 10 years, you're a millionaire. But let me ask you this. Right. Tell them what the sacrifices is to, to, to put oh. that money up. Well, it really wasn't a big sacrifice for me. The only sacrifice was... I had to have two streams of income. So income stream one, I lived off of income stream two, all money in, invest. You know what I'm but, saying? I'm saying, but the sacrifice is oh, yes. that you didn't, you didn't, um, you didn't splurge. You didn't, oh, you went to oh, club, yeah. you didn't buy them joints and all that shit. You didn't. I cut off video games. I cut off shopping. I cut off um, cable. I cut off everything. You know what I'm saying? Except the grind. Yeah, like all money had to go. The only thing I spent a lot of money on is food. I had to eat nice. Yeah. Once I was making that 7K a month, I'm going to get me a nice little plate. Yeah. But 3K a month for sure going into the stock market automatically. But see, here's how I scaled so fast. It was like, I'm in the army. You posting, I'm posting on Instagram, 30K in the account. And I made less. I got more money saved than my superiors. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure out how they don't. But what I realize is everybody lifestyle creep. Mm -hmm. So my superior is making a 6000 a month, this and that. But they spending a five to live because mm -hmm. they got the nice truck. They got mm -hmm. the nice ha house. They always going on vacation. Everybody's spending two flicks mm -hmm. for the ground. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to reverse engineer this shit. I'm going to not give a fuck what y'all think. And I'm going to keep all my money. And in 10 years, when I'm 30, by the time I'm 30, I'm out of here, bro. That, that what I was thinking. That was my mind. I was like, man, I'm about to sacrifice my whole 20s. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, you see you it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I was yeah. like, man, fuck this shit. Fuck the 20s. I'm going to be I'm gonna be lit when I'm 30 because I ain't going to ever be a millionaire to 65. The fuck is that? I can't get on no roller enjoy. coaster. Yeah. I can't skydive. I can't do nothing. Trying to retire at 65. That's what they keep trying to tell us. Retire a millionaire. The fuck can you do with a million dollars at sixty five? <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't. Even, your dick can't even get hard no mm -hmm. more. You get what I'm saying? So that was that was my mind. Where I was like, nah, that ain't happening. But what really happened was people really wanted to learn from me. 
when I'm posting these thousand dollar days, these 4K days, I'm trading. People, I'm trying to learn from you. So I wrote a book. This book spread like wildfire, like wildfire while I'm in the army. And it was the first of its kind. Nobody really wrote a book on how they making money. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? What name of the book was? It's still out. It's called Aristotle's Investing Guide. Okay. To this day, it still sells. And I took it down. Yeah. I don't know how they buying it. Like, if I look, if I look, if I check my account now, I probably made $100 off that book. I make $100. I've been making $100 a day since 2018 off that book, yeah. at least. Yeah. On the minimum. But it was the books. It was the investing. And then I started a mentorship program. I started with one person. And then now I said like 8,000 people. Damn. But a monthly subscription. Yeah. So yeah, like it just took off. But I say all that to say I tell young dudes, like you said, you got to get to a point where you're not thinking about what people, you're not caring what people think. I kind of always knew people didn't understand me and they will never understand me. Mm -hmm. So what's the point? Exactly. You get what I'm saying? Real like, shit. you never going to understand Real me. Shit. You going to doubt everything I say. Real shit. So I just stopped talking to niggas. Like, I used to go and ask niggas for advice. Like, bro, what should I do? What should I do? And when I realized, every single time I go to a nigga, he turn it down. Or he or he doubt it. You get what I'm saying? So I said, you know what? What if I just do it and never, t and never say nothing to a nigga? Real shit. And then I learned. And then when I became successful from not speaking to people, I stopped trusting people's words. You know what I'm saying, Kyle? Mm -hmm. Like, everything, no, you're going to tell me not to do this. I already know what you're going to do. My mom, granddad, all of them. Like, when I first got out, when I was first thinking about getting out of the military, they didn't know I was making money. I was making a 50K a month. <laughs> they like, don't get out of the military. I'm, I'm not trying to tell them I'm bringing in this type of money. They thinking it's a fluke. I'm already driving a 2019 Camaro in 2019. Yeah. I bought my wife the Chevy Blazer in 2019. Yeah. I got 100K worth of cars in 2019, but yeah. I'm still in the army. So no matter what, nigga, like, you got a job. There's no way. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I get out, this motherfucker. People knew it was real when I bought my first house, when I bought Jason Jeter house. Oh, you saying your family knew it was real then? That's when they knew it. They didn't believe it was real until I, I bought that house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a mansion. But it was during COVID, that'd be called 600000 I cashed and I had to pay like two hundred fifty k just yeah. to get the house. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and, and Jason Jeter will tell you this, you know what I'm saying? He the one who was at the closing, yeah. signing. Like, and that's when I first met Jason Jeter. And then, yeah, it just took off from there. And then the pandemic literally just hit. I make a million, the pandemic hit a month later. Pissed me off, because all I could think about was, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go, I think I'm planning that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? World shut down. The best thing that could happen to me. So you think, so So basically, um, the best advice you can get a young nigga is what? Who want to be successful from scratch? From scratch? Two streams of income, live off one, invest the other. Into whatever you want to do. Whether it's a clothing brand, whether it's stocks, whether it's the podcast, whatever route you want to take. Because he already gave y'all 10 streams of income you can make off podcasting. If that's what you want to do, job is how you're going to live. The side hustle is how you're going to fund this. Oh, so, so basically three. To, to, yep. So basically you're saying three. you got to have your job to take care of your family. Right. And, and you got to live at a certain means. Exactly. Because you want to save whatever you can save from taking care of your family from your job. Exactly. To put with your side hustle to fund your purpose. Yes, your side hustle funds your dreams. Yeah, your dreams, not your purpose. Yeah, yeah your dreams. Yeah, yeah, your purpose. All your purpose, yeah. That's the best advice I can give them. Like, nah, it's so it. simple. And dudes be like, how the fuck do you do it? I'm like, bro, it's the simplest formula. Hard work, basically. Two but but the thing they don't want to do, niggas like, okay, what was that like? Cutting hair and being in the army. I said, you want to hear it? Nigga like, yeah. I had to work about 15 hours a day, bro. Nigga like, 15 hours? I only work eight. I'm like, nigga, the army took 12 hours away from me. If I had an eight hour shift, I'd be even richer. I'm like, nigga, you actually got more time than me. Think about that. I got rich while I was in the army and you got more time than me. You got an yeah. extra four hours. If I would have had those extra four hours, I probably, if the army only did an eight, I probably could have stayed in that motherfucker. 12? Oh no, that's, even then I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But still, cause I'm getting money, I'm yeah. making more money than this, than this shit, but. Yeah, like, that's the best advice I can give them, man. Like, 
oh, and discipline and changing your environment. Because what happened was it was a blessing for me. Everybody who I was cool with got stationed somewhere else. So everybody I was cool with went to Hawaii. So I ain't have no niggas. No influence. No influence. Yeah. Yeah, it's just me up, and my yeah. girl, but yeah, my your, girl don't listen your environment, to me. Yeah, yeah, your environment changed for you. Thank you, because yeah. all my niggas left. Yeah. So I ain't going to lie, these niggas were terrible influences on me. <laughs> like, like, goddamn, let's go to the club, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this. Like, they used to, but I literally, like, was already taking my journey, so I was pulling back, but they respected it. Was you kind of rebellious? We'll turn shit to another interview. Fuck with you. See, I shit, fuck, when shit kind of rebellious? When yeah, you kind of rebellious? Yeah. yeah, when I started making money, you couldn't even tell me to do push ups no more. Big bank in the building, kicking it with the OGs, the hottest new show coming out. It's the bridge the gap. I want to empower y'all through the OGs. All right, make sure y'all take every word he said and I said. Excuse nah, it. for sure. Because I picked up a lot of that right here, which every time I sit down with you, I pick up a lot of shit. Nah, for sure. You ain't never too old to learn, never too young to learn. Oh yeah, for sure. Here's why you need to get this ebook right now. It's the best stock market ebook on the market. And to cater to you guys' short attention spans, everything I can't say on one page, I say in the video. So all you gotta do is click watch video, and it'll go straight to a video. What's going on, Myth Busters? Okay. Let's get this thing and started. Let's get this through, thing through. See that I'm talking Swinging about a lot. is something we're always going to be doing in day trading, especially. Facebook users click the link. Instagram users, you can simply comment the word book on any of my posts or under this post to get the link sent to your DM for the book. It is $24. It will literally teach you from A to Z how to get started. Let's get it.